30 seconds. Broadcasting live from the Wolf Radio Studios, it's time for the John Clay Wolf Show. From coast to coast, the largest weekend morning show heard all across America. Hit him up now. 800-800-RADIO. Now, John Clay Wolf. Why does it smell like pot in here? Does it? Because it's I mean, 420, I in, baby. It's like, boom. It's, it's, <laughs> it's early in the morning. It's 420. It's weekend. And Gigi's not here. I'd understand if Gigi was here why it smelled like pot. But... It's 420. Does that, I mean, did y'all get up and all smoke grass? It's not... 420. <laughs> I didn't. I would think Is I everybody would baked? That. Is this like the bake, baker's hour? No, I got four... kids here, guys. It's Just 420. Pre-K. I mean, why don't you, hang on, let me line up all my kids. Let me go get them up so they can all smoke pot too. It's 420. <laughs> Turley, are you stoned? No, just pre-K. Just, Baba, are you stoned? No, I'm fine, It's 420. Man. Where did Gigi go? She disappeared. It's 420. <laughs> <laughs> I was street, tripping yeah. balls. <laughs> and I, I, was, I was like, what the hell, man? That was crazy when she just popped up in the screen like yeah, a Muppet, it's man. It's 420. It's 420. <laughs> it tripped me. Oh, she, she got her gu- gummers, gummer skimmies. It's 420. Boy, how high are you, GG? Come on now. I'm about to get that way. <laughs> no shame in my game. I'm in California, baby. It's legal here. What song is this? This is uh, Fire on the Mountain, man. This is what you fire up. Like, Damn you, right. everybody's got a song, right? Okay. It's like, okay, I'm in the mountains. I'm in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And your friend says, hey, let's uh, fire on the mountain. And you know what that means. Okay. It means it's time to light up. Fire okay. on the Mountain. This little Grateful Dead. You don't know this song? No, I'm not oh, a deadhead. Man. Yeah, this is a great song. Did you ever go to a dead show? No, I've never been to a dead show. I, I went to, you know, Fish Thanks, and 311, those kind of stoner type bands, but no, never Grateful Dead. So, 1995. Carter, my old partner, back when we had the bars and the restaurant things in college, we had to, in order to get these bands booked, we had to take bands we didn't want. Sure. We had a music venue called um, Aardvark is what it lived its life as for 25 years in Fort Worth, Texas. And 311 was forced fed on us by the booking agent. Oh, yeah. And then I didn't go in that night. I was in Dallas at college and Carter was there. He said, man, I think these guys might be good. I've heard good things. I'm like, we had to give them like a seven grand, six grand guarantee, which is what we, we actually just wrote that money off to the other band that packaged with them. Meaning in order for us to get Bobo and the Bobos, we had to play for, 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 sure. for seven grand. We had to pay JD in the wing nuts, six grand. <laughs> and we liked it. It came yeah. together. Yeah, we've carried those wing nuts for years. Years with us. And we appreciate it. So, so Carter calls me. He's like, man, these guys got some money. They just rolled up in like a Prevo. God. And it was 311. And I, he's like, you probably ought to come to this one. And I'm like, dude, I'm working. I mean, I'm in school. Anyway, he calls me about 1030 at night. My, this is my partner at the bar. He said, this is the one of the best bands we've ever had here. And there was nobody there to hear it. There was nobody there to hear really? it. Really? No one? I mean, there's a handful. Oh wow, that'd have been awesome show because they they've played big arenas and stuff to see but not that then. type of band. Yeah, but they, you know they have that sound. When sure. they have that sound, then, sure, oh, sure, yeah. sure, sure. But they just weren't popular yet. Uh, what was their first hit? Three Eleven. Um, I'll pull it up for you. Hold on. Was this it? is a good one though? But this is, is this Three Eleven? Yeah, this is Three Eleven. Hang on. What, what's it, what's this one called? <laughs> Who's got the herb? <laughs> Who's got the herb? Are they big stoners? Oh, oh yeah. Obviously, I'm a square dude. I'm, I just learn. I just like. I just party through y'all stories. Understand? Well, I would, we, I we've like, got you covered there for sure. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was just, you know, working, and I always drink beer. I smoke a little grass, but 
trips my, trips me out a little bit. What's yeah. the best like stoner song to you? Like, what's your go-to stoner song? Um, in college, well, it's, it, it's how how. What is the most cliche answer I could give you? It's Pink Floyd. It's that bad. Yeah. Well, sometimes that's the way to that's go. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Mine was always the last few years is uh, ten years after off the uh, Physical Graffiti album. I just can't get away from it, man. I didn't get into Zeppelin, the deep cuts, until so seventh grade. I was all Black Dog, Led Zeppelin four, you know, the normal stuff. Right. And right. then I got into Stairway and all, you know. But then that that deep side of their catalog, the long opera stuff. Yes. I didn't get into that until I was thirty, and that was like discovering a whole new band. Christmas of like nineteen eighty six or seven. I think I was seventeen years old. My cousin walks in, didn't wrap it or anything. It's right, obviously can you bring huge. those lights down, dog? This is way too bright for this conversation. Hands me an me. LP <laughs> copy of Houses of the Holy and the song, uh, the Rain song on Perfect. that album. I was like, oh my God. Right. Zeppelin's for real, man. Ten Years Gone. Yeah, ten Years Gone is great. Uh, what's the dead one? Um, uh, in My Time of Dying. In My Time of Dying. Oh my God. Yeah. It's good stuff. I mean, that'll carry you right along with it, man. So in college, like the my my roommates went to boarding school, or the guys across the hall from me, big stoners, and they would take a bottle of um, oh no, that's for vodka. They they'd fill a bottle of scope with a vodka and put blue food coloring in it. But they they had a like a two liter, um, thanks pre K. They had like a two. Li- we're talking about weeds. You probably ought to get involved in this one. Uh, <laughs> thank you for getting me that. The, the, two liter Coke bottle. Fill it with bounce sheets. Punch the bottom of it out. Have a fan by the window. And aerosol um, oh, deodorant. Yeah. So take a big old drag. Blow it through their filter that they made with that bottle. And then it goes through the bounce sheets. Out into the fan. Out to the window. And psh, psh, on the way out with the aerosol. And take a towel, roll it up tight, jam it under the door jam of the dorm room door for airtight seal, and they had it down. Wow. Did that And that worked? Yeah. Jeez, I wish I'd have known that. But I went over there one night, like the first night I ever really got stoned, and I smoked with them, and I went in my dorm room, and I was tripping balls. Because they're professionals, so their right. weed is really strong. So I, Pink Floyd got into that, and it was a... Uh, was it Wish You Were Here? Yeah, That's a good right. starting point for I, a lot of people. I think yeah. it was Wish You Were Here. Yeah. And then some Jimi Hendrix came on. And I took the speakers and I turned them. I sat on the floor. I turned the speakers at me. The big home speakers. Mm-hmm. And I was wearing them like earphones. Right? I was sitting on the ground with these big old con- cabinets pointed in at me. And just tripping balls to this. And I was seeing it. Boy. I was just seeing it, man. Those are the days. Yeah. You had it right up to your ears. Pink Floyd can do that so many ways. I'm back. 30 years ago. The the clarity of the guitar and stuff is just a different... And maybe we can get our head there now with meditation. I don't know. I'm kind of getting there a little bit. But but you hear things that you just wouldn't hear. You get it. Because you don't get it. Until you get it. This is great, because it's only in, in the right speaker right now. Right. Yeah. But your lead is fixed to come in on the right. left. Right. Check this out, right here. Right. You get it? Wow. Damn. Right? Right. And by that, and now you're in. Now you're in. Dude. Now you're in. GG you ain't going nowhere. Gigi's not getting it. She's not feeling it. This is white people stuff right here. I mean, I'm into music, but this is a very, like, you don't belong in this conversation, girl. Just sit someplace and be quiet. Well, we'll t- get- <laughs> you can get too high for Pink Floyd. What gets you there, then, Gigi? What songs get you there? Pass the Duchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pass the Duchy. You know what I mean? Musical youth? You're damn right. right. Yeah, pass Dang. it on. That's what I'm saying. Did that song get you like in the groove? Wow. I mean, who you hear the drum line, you hear it come in, and they talk it's about the passing blah, blah, blah. Yes. Blah, blah. 
Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, rules the nation. <laughs> That's right. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, but I get the whole putting your head between two speakers things. And did this the- song gets you going. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Here we go, here we go. Get that dance, get that dance. Here we go. It's a reggae, that's what it is. You feel it, right? It's what, are you sh- what are you showing on camera, It's 420, What is that? Baby. It's her it's legal. Oh, it's legal? In California. Oh. In California. I mean, it, it's effective, but all that music sounds the same, man. No, yeah. it doesn't. It's, Are it's, you kidding me? It's fun. This, I am this not song kidding you. Inspired me. This and Ricky Skaggs. Oh man, which is a big bipolar different Boy, option here. Yeah, no, but, bluegrass is like that. Too. But but so these guys like were playing this song on MTV, and that little short black kid was playing that tiny little guitar, right? And I'm like, man, I was I was in third grade. I was like, that's the right size for me. And then Ricky Skaggs was jamming on those little mini electrics also in one of his videos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I asked for that for Christmas, and I got a little blue mini guitar just like this kid was playing. Oh, yeah. Yep. You felt it. Yeah. Well, I don't know yeah. if I felt it. I just want to learn how to play guitar. <laughs> yeah. But and you're feeling it now. I'm listening. Fender Wave Bird. Is that what it was? Yeah. It's an electric mandolin. Yeah. And but the first song I learned to play was, we put up... Pull up "Swinging" by John Anderson. <laughs> God, oh, man. I mean, this is a mess. Did you say? <laughs> we just slammed we into swinging. a wall. <laughs> we just, I know that. Bam. I like that song. We're just, I like that song. You don't even know that song. What is that? Sing it? Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. Little Susie, she's as pretty as the, the angels, angels when they the swing. Kids. I can't believe I'm out here on, on her front point. porch in her swing, just a swinging. There you wow. go. Wow. All right. Okay. So this was the first song that I learned on that little guitar at Mark's Music in Joshua, Texas. Okay, that's pretty badass. I guess G and C or something. I mean, I wasn't singing. I was just playing the chords. I, I love have, this song. Don't we have John Anderson here right now? In fact. John, come here, John. Yes. Step up to the mic real quick. Hey, Johnny. There's only two chords in this song. It's easy to play when you that's are swinging. Swing. Mm-hmm. Swing. Yeah, the girl singers, man. <laughs> I love it. Did you get up to fry? Daddy was in the backyard, blowing up garden holes. I was on the porch with Charlotte, feeling love down to my toes, and we were swinging. 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 That's right. <laughs> swinging. <laughs> Uh, this is what when they say, <laughs> I'm glad I can't believe I'm out there. Front porch and her swing is just a swing. You see people in their cars swinging, staring at the radio. <laughs> what the hell? It is, it is 420. It's 420. It is. Obviously. Right. Well, that's one way to open it up. <laughs> Wolfpackers out there on the YouTube stream, I'm sure you're making fun of us on the comments on the side of the... If you guys want to... Yeah, on our U- at jcwshow.com, you click through that, and it shows the video of us, and there's a group of people on there. I haven't looked yet, but normally there's a bunch, and they're commenting and talking to each other. Little Charlotte, she's as pretty as the angels as she sings. Okay, hang on, real quick. Terrence, sing it! Sing it! Terrence, you're on, sing it. Speech impediment, Terrence. Speech impediment, Terrence. Are you there? Oh, he can't He's hear He's here. You. Why can't he hear me? I don't know. He's did, there. Did we test the phone? Oh, yeah. We tested him. Sing it, Terrence. Swing it. All right. Okay, so we've got to quit the 420 thing for a minute. And we'll do the 420 car segment. And that's coming up next. Call in 800-800-7234, 800-800-7234, 800-800-RADIO. Give me year, make, model, miles, average, rough, or clean. What? Why? What am I talking about? I'm talking about buying cars, homeboy, with John Anderson and past the duchy, Pink Floyd, and Led Zeppelin. I mean, where you been? Keep up. We'll be right back. Yeah, some people say syndicated shows aren't that good because they don't have that local feel. Right. But you don't skyrocket to the number one weekend spot by sucking. Hey, 
the largest radio show and fastest growing podcast, The John Clay Wolf Show. Go to jcwshow.com. good stuff here today in the give me the vin lanes and I just wanted to go over them now this is a sweetie dude this is a 96 993 Porsche into the Mohicans last of the air cooled but this is a turbo Porsche the first Highline car I have ever bought and sold in 1996 Seven, maybe it was six, was this car in white with 4,000 miles on it. And I sold it back then for 115 grand. And I think that was sticker. But this car is specifically, it's just, these cars will do nothing but continue to go up in value. These low mile turbos, hell even high mile turbos. I mean, we sold one with higher miles for 10,000 more in a better color it was that metallic burgundy mist thing but pretty much the same ride uh i know we had a bunch of vipers today and we missed them and we had them in the wrong lane we needed them in lane 20 which is our specialty lane because cars like this like a 94 rt you know with 9,000 miles it takes the right kind of person to buy them and we had them in the truck lane which is not where our specialty cars are so they have to be i'm going to run these vipers with the in the right order next week i hate missing cars and having no sales but we just had them in the wrong spot but i mean look at these vipers look at this acr well i bought four of these about six years ago off of a poker player in amarillo texas his son that you might have heard him i think it's T amarillo slim or tennessee slim he's a famous poker player he passed away his son had four of these acrs and we bought all four of them and that's when I learned about ACRs because I really didn't know what the hell it was. But these are pretty damn unique rigs. So this is an SS El Camino. Yeah, it's got the original radio, the original cluster. The dash looks perfect. The seats look perfect. The car carpet's perfect. Little accessories, it's the little things that matter. This little, I mean, just, the, just, just this to work right, nothing be screwed up and everything. That means that somebody spent a fortune of time and or money doing this right, which I do, I've learned to appreciate from us trying to do things right and realizing what it takes to do something right. I'm gonna have trouble letting this one go. I'm having, a, a, tough one, huh? I'm having a little trouble here because I love these kind of cars and we have a bunch that we're trying to restore but I don't get to enjoy any of them because they're all in restoration. So maybe I'll just need to keep this until we get some of our other cars finished. Is that okay? I agree. Okay. The G-Wagons are out and about. And these factory mats are um, an uptick in the sticker price. Magnum PI, I was actually at uh, the Reno Museum and they had Magnum's car there last Saturday with Adam Corolla. He was doing his Paul Newman collection. And I think Corolla's fixing to buy one of Paul Newman's Budweiser race cars that is a 308. McLaren G, G, Pentaga G, Urus, ZR. There you go. Talk about last of the Mohicans. ZR1 with 5,000 miles in orange and the cool spoiler. GT3s, these things are just evergreen popular. Everybody absolutely loves them. Um, Ferrari. What else we got? This isn't all of them. We got a bunch in California too. But it's uh, been a good day today. We sold most of this stuff, almost all of it. And now we can get paid in the morning and reload. Because it takes a lot of money to do this. Like a lot of money and a lot of guts and a lot of time and a lot of title work, a lot of transportation, uh, a lot of broken promises from the people we buy them from. They say we own them, then we don't. And the transport gets there, and they sold us out, and they didn't. 
And then they call us again the next week for another buy bid. And we're like, hey, dude, you can't keep your word. So if your word's no good, we can't deal with you. Anyway, a great day at the sale. Remember, go to GiveMeTheVin.com if you want to sell yours. We don't just buy exotics. I show you these cars because they're sexier. But one of these uh, days, I need to do a truck video. You wouldn't believe the trucks that we have. We are truck fiends. Sold 960 cars today, and I've got to go back to work and start buying. Got some good stuff here today. Oops, we got an issue. Why wow, they put it upside down? He gotta be kidding me. So how should he have stored these cars? If he knew he was gonna put them up for 30, 40, 50 years, how should he have done it? What's the proper way so people can know what to do? Really, there's no way just to, uh, you could drain all the fluids out or you could fill all the fluids up all with the way something, up. but you know, the fuel would still deteriorate and just uh, eventually just turn into goo, you know? So what about the brake lines? Should you drain them out? Absolutely. It's, and the radiator? We're still gonna, yeah. Right, just, do so if we're gonna put a cart for 20 years, hell for 10 years, wanna dump all the fuel out, wanna dump all the brake fluid out, wanna dump all the radiator fluid out. Leave the oils in, and then, But the then it'll still, with no fluid in it, you're gonna get condensation and moisture and, and it's gonna rust. So the best way to do this would be to drive them once a month. It's, it's absolutely, absolutely, it's factory fresh to the nines. They undercoated it at the dealer, I guess. That's what all the black stuff is here. And you know, it's kind of, when you, ha when you have to take a bolt loose, it's kind of gooey like right along the frame rail. It's kind of sticky still, mm -hmm. but it has no dirt on it. No grime, no nothing. All of this is all, they didn't coat the rear axle. Or the so we're, I guess we're just, uh, we're just hanging out. We're hanging while John's bidding cars on a, on a car break. So they didn't even ask you pre-K, what's, what's your favorite, like 420 music? As the resident big time stoner, y'all know I got to bring y'all the real, okay? If you want the best 420 smoking song, look up Bone Thugs and Harmony weed song, okay? It's, it's epic, okay? It's like the Odyssey. It's a it's a trip through time and space, man. But it's just all about weed. Really? Yeah. Okay. You'll have to show me that later. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna get blitzed and listen to some Bone Thugs. What's uh, you, have you got a lyric for me? What's it about? Um, there's there's a part where where Busy Bone, one of the Bone Thugs in Harmony, uh, he hits the this high note and he goes. The weed can't get no better, no better, baby. Twenty dollar hollers all day, every day. So it's Tell groovy you. as hell. It's groovy, but it's slow. It it gets you there, man. What about you? What's some of your what, another one of your favorite smoking songs, huh? Well, we were talking earlier about Pink Floyd and uh, you know all the trippy rock and roll that we do. Yeah. But you know, I never discovered the weed until I was like 17. Oh. Hey, I was a tied down young Republican. I was an Alex P. Yeah. Keaton type, right? Okay. So Those the first couple of times I got into it, they're, they're smoking at the Dairy Queen, you know, out, outside in the little gazebo thing. Yeah. And sooner or later, you gotta go home. So I go home and I'm trying to play it cool. And, uh, Went to my dad's den and took out my mom's records and listened to uh, Ray Charles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Modern sounds and country music. And what'd that do for you? Georgia, Georgia. And just fly with Ray, man. Ray Charles is some of the... Because you know, Ray... Ray, Ray was groovy, man. He did a few substances himself. I think so. I right? think it was just weed, though. If you saw, if you saw the movie with Jamie Foxx, he did some substances, man. Yeah. Tony just told me we could chat. Um, okay, yeah, let me... Let me tell, tell you, me. Mama. Tell you, Pa. Gonna send you back to Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's some of y'all's uh, favorite smoking songs, chat? Huh? Smoking at the Dairy Queen, baby. 
I remember the first time, the first time I got high. Oh. Um, my, my homies had been trying to convince me to do it for a while. And um, Maybe you got the peer pressure? Yeah. Oh, peer <laughs> pressure is for real. Peer pressure is for real. No, it is. Yes, it is. Um, and uh, I said, okay, you know what? I'll do it. If you, if you take me to Waffle House afterwards and pay for my dinner. <laughs> okay. And showed up. We, we smoked a joint behind the uh, elementary school we used to just hang out on the playground. We were like yeah, 16, 17 at the time. Um, and so we, we smoked this joint, cough and all that stuff. You know how it goes. And then I just remember the going to Waffle House and being like, everybody here knows I'm high. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, that and, early And great waffles. But once you get over it, it's great, you know. Uh, my friend Ike and I would listen to, I listened to a lot of Buffett back then, a lot of Jimmy oh, yeah. Buffett. And he had on his live album a song called God's Own Drunk. It's like a story song about, mm -hmm. you know, going up in the mountain. And I promised my brother-in-law that I'd watch his still for him while he went into town to vote. Yeah. And he sees a bear and God's <laughs> yellow moon shining on the cool, clear evening. It's an adventure. And it's, yeah, it's like, it's like 17 minutes long, man. Yeah, yeah God's let's, let's, own uh, drunk and a fearless man. <laughs> let's give some shout outs to the chat. Uh, um, Adele, you said, or Adel? I always pronounce your name wrong. Um, because I Got High, definitely a good stoner song. Uh, Three Little Birds, that's Bob Marley, right? Yes. Okay, Fred G, Don't I see you. Don't worry about Victor, thing. Victor said he just wants to hear, hear some Cheech and Chong, man. And I ain't mad. Rico said Grateful Dead. Oh, yeah, y'all are busting out the classics. Philip, Gin and Juice. Uh, let's see. Yeah, y'all some smokers in the chat, huh? Okay. <laughs> Gabriel no said too high, little dicky. What's Feisty token on, I wonder? Yeah, Feisty, where you at? What's up, Rico? Big L still smoking by Mystical. I see you, Big L. <laughs> <laughs> L. <laughs> That's the jam, man. <laughs> All right. We going to get back to it, baby. John Clay Wolf Show. Let's go. Oh, is that live? They all don't, they all don't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre-K is really good at that, man. an old couple in the front room of their home. They had their rocking chairs and they'd been living there 53 years. This faith healer came on the radio. He said, I can heal you tonight if you're in the sound of my voice this evening. Put one hand on your radio and put one hand on what you want healed. <laughs> so her husband looked over and said, well, what the hell can I lose? He reached over and put one hand on the radio and sneak one hand down his lap. His wife looked over at him, she said, Al, she said he could heal, not raise the dead. Broadcasting coast to coast. This is the John Clay Wolf Show. Presented by GiveMeTheVin.com. Call John, toll free. Cheap bastards. 1-800-800-RADIO. 800-800-RADIO. Hit up the website for podcasts, merch, and how to contact the crew. Now, John Clay Wolf. So what, what were y'all doing during the break? Or while I was doing the cars, y'all were over there talking to the guys in the YouTube stream? Yeah. A lot Isolated? Of, a lot of times That's pretty cool. during breaks and things like pre-K and I, like JD and I will wander off and talk some, some show stuff. You know, there's, there's always something going on, even when you can't hear us here on the radio. And if you got the live stream on YouTube, uh, you can watch us do some of that stuff. And somebody suggested, you know, you should film that. You should, you should stream that. Was it live that. or was it filmed? I don't know. It was live. live. <laughs> it was live. It was live. 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 Yeah. Mav was like, I don't know. I, just I don't talking. know. That mic you have on, I don't know how long it lasts, but just let you know they're turned on. So 
I don't know if they'll last four hours. Oh, they're listening to me, man. <laughs> oh, are they? Oh, they're getting it through the deal? Did I say that out loud? That's cool. <laughs> You're high. Ch -ch 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 Could they hear me? <laughs> Florida news. What do, I, what do I do? I just left. I was in Florida yesterday. I was in Palm. Nice. And now, from North America's own land down under, it's time for Sunshine beach. State uh -huh. News. I went to the With hotel. Your certified live went to the auction. J.D. Ryan. Just came on. I did go to a topless joint. Of course. Of course you did. Yeah, but. Research. Here's the absolute truth, honey. Oh, no. Yeah, here we go. Confessions. I, well, I mean, you know, she told me if I ever go to a topless joint, I'm supposed to tell her. Just tell her. So, I was staying at the... I don't know, Hampton, Spring Hill, whatever, right? Sure. And there's nothing near it. The closest restaurant was like 17 minutes away. I mean, besides besides um, McDonald's. And so I drove, and I was going to BJ's. No pun intended. You know BJ's Brewhouse? Sure. Yeah. And, and it was 17 minutes. I was like, how can this be so far? Why did they not have restaurants here? And I looked out and when I was at the light, there was a thing that said, I think Rachel's in Palm, West Palm. And then I looked that up. It says Steakhouse. I'm like, well, there's one right there. It looks like a nice place. Great big ass, bad ass steakhouse. So when I pulled in and I asked the, I got the vibe, right? You it was right nice. <laughs> I, I did not know, but I <laughs> deeply suspected because the palm trees, but we were in Florida. The palm trees. We yeah. were in Florida. We're, we're in Florida. Florida. Yeah. What's the name of the city? West Palm. palm. The glitter that's on there, the no, floor. No, 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 no. I'm talking about when I drove in the parking lot. Ah, ah. Sure is nice. And uh -huh. I was. This sure is nice. Mm -hmm. And in the the valet walked right up valet. to me. Valet. Wow. I'm like, hey, is this a boot bar or a steakhouse? He said, yes, both. <laughs> 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 oh, she's mad at me already. <laughs> oh, look, oh, look at, Gigi. at Gigi. Right, Gigi's mad too. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm there. I'm like, all right. So I go in, <clears throat> and he didn't make me pay because I told him. I, I said, "Where's the steakhouse?" He said, "There's a private party in that room tonight." Oh. I said, "Where can I sit and eat? I don't want to do the norm." <laughs> I don't want boobs. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. No, seriously, I was hungry. Seriously, th th I mean. I'm really telling the honest God's truth here. And I talked to the guy, and he lets me in for free. And I go sit down at the bar, and immediately, you know, this gal whips around. I'm sitting at the bar. I'm trying to order. And she's like, from Czechoslovakia or something. Hi there. No, no, that ba bad, bad accent. Bad. Much heavier. And Czechoslovakia. Or... <laughs> I can't do a Czechoslovakia. But, but I had to go through three of them. And I was like, hey, I'm just here to eat. I just want to eat. I'm just trying to chill down. I just, I don't want any company. Well, be that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Look, so, at the, look at the face on Gigi. It's like she smelled something so, bad. So I ate. <laughs> I had two beers. Yeah. I did not order a steak. I was like, this will take too long. What did I order? Some salad thing. <laughs> Hold on. You okay. went in for a steak. <laughs> yeah, you went in for a steak Jeez. and saw boobies and suddenly weren't hungry. While I'm okay. here, I'll have a salad. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just wanted something fast because the, the yeah. gals would not quit harassing sure. me. Sure, see money. They had mm -hmm. good TVs, had good sports. I turned around and I did take in the scenery for a minute. Of course, you have to, right? Absolutely. And and they're very thick down there. Those Cubans. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> they're pretty thick. Nothing hey, wrong with it. Hey man, I'm just telling you what I saw. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you didn't see a steak. No, you could have got a steak. I just didn't want to wait. I didn't want to wait that long. And there were, I, could, I, I, I was honest, engine. I, I was in a hurry. I just wanted to get in. I want to eat something. I want to go back to the hotel. How many girls came up to you? Three. Damn. And and ten minutes? Fifteen. That's they're working yeah, hard. So he got his, yeah, you got your boob fix for the night. I didn't. I, I get my boob fix at the house. I didn't need it. I was all good, man. I'm not, I'm not joking. I I I, I, mm -hmm. I shouldn't even brought this up. Because yeah, you really shouldn't. Because you look at Playboy for the articles, right? <laughs> I was hungry. Uh huh. Mm. I was hungry, okay. and I didn't want to drive across town. And to Rachel, Rachel's was right there, and on the reviews it said great. I mean, it said Rachel's Steakhouse. Maybe it wasn't mm. Rachel. Maybe it was something else. Anyway, so some gal's name. 
the problem with your story. It would have hey, been if great. You're, if you're in West Palm, call and tell me what the name of that place is. 800-800-7234. 800-800-RADIO. What? If you're going to lie to your wife, the problem with the story mm-hmm. here is you should have just went with that you did have a steak and how great the steak was, and that yeah. was the whole purpose. But you, you just said you just had a salad. I had a cheese, what well, do you got? mozzarella and tomato and vinegar and something else. Wait, yeah. Uh, I, um, yeah, yeah. It, it was fine. I think that's right, yeah. I, you know, I'll tell you what, I looked at the, at the steak charges too, and it was too much. Gotcha. Oh, so you're trying to save money, right? <laughs> what? Oh, okay. Just not spend. I'm just yeah. not a spendy yeah. bitch. I don't want to give my money to them hoes, and I don't want to give my money to overpriced BS steaks. I just wanted to eat, dude, and have a beer and chill for a second. That's all I wanted. Why don't you get off my ass? <laughs> <laughs> Rachel's. It is Rachel's. It is Rachel's. Uh, Bellman Palm Beach. Directly off I-95. See, if I'd have had you with me, yeah, I wouldn't have the problem I'm going to have when I get off the radio today. No, I would have covered you. You don't have to go to a strip club for that though man you can here's what i do like right. i'll go to like an applebee's or a chili's i would have if there would have been one closer and just treat the wait staff like they're strippers <laughs> delray <laughs> beach you're on the air delray beach that's close enough you there hang on i thought i pulled him up pre-k there he is hey you there uh, right here yes sir oh, they're all over now it's all filling pompano beach west palm beach jupiter florida yes <laughs> uh, west palm. What, what, what what's the name of that place is it rachel's Rachel's. Is the steak any good? The steak is great. See, I don't know about the salad you ate, though. I just, yeah. I the hear salad, you. Salad, yeah, that's questionable there. Cuban girls, come on. What about it? I'm just saying. What about them? The salad, I'm just saying. No, I'm t- you said Cuban girls. What about Cuban girls? You mentioned Cuban girls. I did, but now you mention it, so you you they're please thick. elaborate. Oh, they're thick. T h i c c. Something like that. Yes. Rod in Carolina. Yeah, I'm calling from West Palm. I drive by it every day. It is Rachel's Steakhouse. You are correct. Okay. And are Cuban girls thick for five hundred? That I wouldn't know because I just drive past it on I-95 on the way to work. (laughs) All right. Gigi, are Cuban girls thick? Hell yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Just call me Thickums, and I'm not even Cuban. Are black girls thick? Damn right. That's why y'all love us so much. All Mm -hmm. or some? I'd say for the most part, most. Mm -hmm, That's right. All right, well, well, we, we can go out with this, right? <laughs> Who is this? That's right. Who sings see it this? Bounce. I this don't know, is, but you uh, see it bounce. Jennifer Lopez. Really? Yes. She's Cuban. Oh. Okay. All right, we'll be right back. My name's John Clay. We'll buy cars on the radio for America's Best Car Bar. Give me the van.com. Showing the true artistry looks like. The John Clay Wolf Show. If it's more you crave, check out jcwshow.com. Podcast replays, Twitch, socials, live stream, and check out the GMTV Garage YouTube channel.
John Clay Wolf Show. He died, dude. Oh, Dickie Betts? Jeez. JD, this is too deep for you. Yep. <laughs> hey, Terrence, I was trying to get you to sing earlier. Do you know how to sing? Can you sing? Uh, uh, you know? Sing it. Yeah, Nicky, Nicky, that's God. No, Dickie, that's God from the... All right, all of them, brother. That's right. Thank you, Speech you Impediment Terrence. You got it. I miss him already. Well, uh, Laura, can I request a Laura? I was born around the Uh, hold on. Uh, we're taking a request you know, can here. You <laughs> can you play that? Can, can you write? Dedication to him? Yeah. Huh? Uh, what? Ramblin' Man is your uh, request. Well, ain't that, ain't that, I'm making this. Speech impediment, Terrence. If I play it, are you going to sing it? Go. Fallenberg. Sing it. What? And trying to do all the things the best I can. Damn. When it comes to yeah, you hear, I hope you understand that I was born rambling, man. Does anybody see the irony yeah, in having yeah. speech impediment yeah. Terrence yeah. singing yeah. Like Rambling Man? <laughs> I was in a group, man, called the Rock and Roll. And, okay, but, oh, yeah. I, I got the radio now. All right. Well, you're sounding pretty good. You're sounding pretty feisty, pretty cheery, pretty clear this morning. Did you take your speech impediment pill? Because I can hear you today. He just hung up. <clears throat> he rambled away. <laughs> <laughs> he rambled on. Actually, when he calls in, this needs to be his background music. I mean, he's a rambling perfect. man. Perfect. He is right. a rambling man. Yes. And he suggested it. This yes. is perfect. And he actually sang it pretty well. <laughs> he, he was singing it just It's like Mel Tellus, you know, stuttering, but when he sang, he was perfect. Mel Tillis. Yeah, Dickie Betts drugged the Allman Brothers into the modern age after Dwayne Allman passed away. I mean, he he took over as lead guitarist. He wrote Ramblin' Man. He wrote Revival. And he sang those songs. He's the guy with the country voice in the Allman Brothers that most people have never heard of. Dickie Betts. He was a great. Is Who's singing right here? Is that him? That's him, yeah. All right. We always assumed it was, you know, Greg Allman. No. Did Greg Allman, they cut their stuff in Muscle Shoals, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, it started... Dwayne Allman wanted to be a recording star and a guitar god. And the guy who owned Fame re- Records mm-hmm. would not hire a long hair hippie. He wouldn't even talk to him. He wouldn't even interview him. So Dwayne Allman set up a tent across the road back then. It wasn't even a street. And lived in the field across the road from Fame Recording Studios. And the guys, you know, I I forget the guy's name who owned Fame Recording, but he's always looking for who's the next big thing. Mm -hmm. Who's the next big, great guitarist? Mm -hmm. And a guy came up and said, there's a guy playing clubs around town, and you should hear him. What's his name? Dwayne Allman. Well, where do we find him? He's living in a tent right across the road. He's been out there for eight weeks (laughs) waiting for an interview. (laughs) That's how it happened. That's literally how it happened. That's literally how it happened. And then he became the house man. He, he, he was one of the house band members, right? Yeah. And that's really how the Allman Brothers came to be. Yeah. That's how Fame Brothers. Recording Studios came to be. That's a great story. I did not know that. He you got to go was, out to Muscle yeah. Shoals and take the tour. That's awesome. The reason fame is fame is because of this guy. Yeah, not because they guy, got all those deals. Aretha recorded there after that. Uh, so many bands. Hey, Chase in Oklahoma City, it says uh, for your 140,000 mile 
Extended cab Chevy four wheel drive. Your homie offered nineteen, but you want nineteen to twenty. I would sell it to your homie, homie. Ten and four. Yeah, it's uh, like. Oh yeah, yes sir. Yeah, it, it, is it extended cab or a crew cab? Um, I think it's an extended cab. It's got the four doors that all open, but it's not the full crew in the back. You know, double cab is what that's called. But yeah, if, okay, you, if, if you have yeah, if you have a yeah. uh, one if you have if he really will give you nineteen grand for it and it's got one hundred thirty eight thousand miles on it, you need to punt because these cars are coming down quick. <clears throat> Thank you. You know, for the longest time, remember when we were like, let it make any sense, prices on stuff? Sure. Well, like MSRP on this truck is forty two thousand, and it's and a year old. It's bringing forty at the auction. That doesn't make any sense. Well, all that's come to fruition now. Yeah, <laughs> it's back. Right. We're back. Finally, sense has come yeah. into the marketplace, and it's happening rather quickly, especially on like the newer ones, like the three year old cars, the current twenty fours, twenty threes, twenty twos. They're adjusting quick. Finally, this adjustment that I've been prophesizing about it took a little long time, but it's happening, and it's happening at a rapid pace. Because spring normally is a good time. Yeah, and yeah. it was for about five minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello, goodbye. <laughs> yeah, hello, goodbye. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's happening quick. Right. And when the car prices went up, that was the first. Our market was the first hyperinflation market that I saw. If y'all remember, long-time listeners remember, uh, you know, in the summer of COVID, right after COVID or during COVID, I, got, I was like, oh, my God, you wouldn't believe what happened today. Like, the the car prices exploded on the auction exploded. block. exploded. You're like, holy mackerel, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I said, this is hyperinflation. This is, There's no other way to explain this. This is hyperinflation. And then wood came on. And then what other things went crazy? Wood went crazy. Oh, that's right. And then, Mike, do you remember anything else? Groceries. So Groceries. Yeah, there was milk yeah, but, and but, stuff but like, like that. But like there was a fir- first few things just went kaboomy, kaboomy, kaboomy. And, but used cars said it. And I'm telling you, it's coming down quick. So that tells me that this interest rate that they've been pushing is finally kicking in. And the rest of it has to just Whatever that means. But it has, something has to give, man, because you can't afford food anymore. You've been right so many times. I mean, I went to a strip bar and I bought a salad, man. <laughs> yeah, what's that about? It's too, uh, I remember, speaking of COVID, I remember when you <laughs> did research and you were in Florida and you went to a strip bar and I think it was on your phone or something. And your wife saw it and you're like, I was doing research and it was brilliant. I mean, you were going to tell them why. Market research. Market research. Yes. Christ, yes. It's a great idea. He's because already, we're talking about COVID. But he's already in trouble for the last segment. It was on your phone and your wife saw it. I mean, why don't you just bring up everything? <laughs> because it was brilliant what you were what doing. What brilliant? No, what you were doing What was. you're doing is not brilliant. <laughs> yes, it is. Too, because, she had almost forgotten that, J.D. No, well, no, she hadn't. Trust no. me. No, not anymore. No, what no. he did was call it. He called the topless club. Just called. He didn't go by. But to see what the <laughs> rules were, how close they were getting. Because to we be. were trying to see what right. was going on. Because the world was shut down. Thank you. But this place was open, and, and they played this song. <laughs> and this gal, this Cuban gal and named Melissa, to... that was <laughs> no. dancing to the Almond Brothers in reggae. No, none of that happened. I think strip bars are a, a relatable microcosm Thank trending. You. Yes, that's all market he was doing. Entity. Hey, JD. Hang on. Hey, come? everybody, stop. Listen here, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, out of bringing all that up. Yeah. Out of all that up. All that, that was cool. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Okay. But when you said, you know, and your wife got your phone and she was going through it. I didn't and then, say that. Yeah, he I basically said she saw it on I mean, your but, phone. Yeah, but what, what made you feel like you had to include that part into the story? That was the reason. Because that's the part that's going to create the rub. Oh, and that brings all the bad vibe out. Oh, you wonder why I just <laughs> shut up. I hear you. <laughs> God dang. We don't pay him to talk. We pay him to shut up. Mike, just turn the mic off. GG. Do you, are you feeling me? Or am I? You are in so much trouble. I, I didn't know he's not. <laughs> he gave the history, too. Oh, it's you not. The history. So yeah. yeah, we didn't need a history <laughs> lesson. <laughs> Don't you remember you back in I just wanted a steak, but then I saw some boobies and I got a salad and I was okay. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> you okay? You were oh in God. so much trouble. No, he's not. I didn't do a damn thing with nothing. Well, it's I even saved okay. money. I didn't pay no cover. I didn't buy a steak. It's been good being on the but show. But you're about to pay the price when you go home for real. <laughs> Should have got a steak. <laughs> and she's somewhere looking at your phone right now. Mm-hmm. That's right. She's pulling up oh, those I phone forgot. logs right oh, now. Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, 
We'll be back Thanks, in just Stevie. a minute. My name is John Clay Wolf. Buy cars and radio for America's best car buyer. Give me the VIN.com. Remember, JCW show is where the stream is also. If it's new car time, give me the VIN.com reminds you that buying smart always means getting the best offer for your current vehicle. You don't have to haggle for hours with retailers or deal with low-balling strangers from Craigslist when it's as easy as logging in, entering your VIN number and a couple of picks, and getting your best offer fast. Because smart sellers make smart shoppers. So get the market's best bid and your check on the spot with give me the VIN.com, America's best car buyer. Sell us your car. Give me the VIN.com. So easy you can John Clay Wolf Show. Here's what's going on in the Wolf Pack. She got a 10-year-old vet, but really these convertibles bring more when they're automatics. And why? Do you know why, Dave? So the women can drive them, yes, sir. There you go. So the women can drive them. Not that a woman can't drive a stick. It's just not comfortable. Is that misogynistic? That, oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Really? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Misogyny. Yeah. Well, I'll anyway. call you m M&M. and <laughs> The John Clay Wolf Show. Every Saturday morning. Check out the YouTube channel. Complete with live video stream at jcwshow.com. Hey, Gigi, I'm going to test your mic. You're a little low. Okay. I, I was afraid to be too close to it because it sounded super loud. No, no. But is this okay? Yeah, yeah. You can. I've shaft, which, you know, they shouldn't. But obviously, it it's a brand new truck. Yeah. Oh, well. It's all plastic together <laughs> well, so they don't drop a piece of it on the assembly line. And normally, after a couple of years, it just falls off. And it's, it's still there on both sides. Yeah. In the paint mark? Yeah. Yeah. All the, over there, Bryce. All these marks here where they would use that Pink color paint. as it went down the line to make sure it had the cotter pins in it and everything was tight and they would check off on it. So when people get geeky about restoring cars, I've seen them go to the level of this. Yeah, mimicking all to the try to paint mimic spots. Every and the, paint and the, mark, and the, and the, every fact, yeah. Somebody would put their initials on it somewhere. They'll try to put that all back on it. Right. Keith, you want to do the honor of turning the key and seeing if she'll roll over and put a little spark to us? Is it just ready to turn? I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. she's ready to turn over. Make sure it's in neutral there. It's a three on the tree? Yeah. Take a second to get fuel from that tank up here, but... You ready? Yep. I've got a I've got fluid that I've been priming it with. Um, we're gonna adjust the dwell real quick. We put new points in it, and so they won't start until everything's. Well, it's, it's turning, turning over. over what's keeping it from starting with up? The new points in it. You have to get them the dwell set on a certain somewhere close to what it'll take to run it. Then once it's running, you can adjust it again. We're at about 10, we need to be about 25. Let me, here, let me get this. Oh, excuse me. Not running. It's What's, not doing anything. Just staying right where it's at? Yeah, until you turn the key, when you flip the key up, and it jumps and then goes right back down. Hmm. We got a connection issue somewhere. <laughs> what the points do is they 12 volt power, or roughly about nine to 10 volts of power go.
minutes, two minutes. seconds. Welcome to another episode of What's a 401k? 401k is like a really, really long foot race. I think it's a drug from the early 90s. It's a car so f***ed up that nobody wants to buy it for any amount of money. Like in baseball, it's a crap load of strikeouts. The number of calories in a keto meal? It's like mass times thrust minus altitude plus the weight of the passenger. Dude, 401k is when you're too stoned to remember 420, bro. This has been another episode of What's a 401k? And live from the United States, it's Saturday morning. It's the John Clay Wolf Show starring John Clay Wolf. With J.D. Ryan, Michael Turley, and Bobby Brown. And featuring DJ Pre-K, G.G. Drummond, Keith Richards, with the world's biggest son of a bitch, and Satan, the Prince of Darkness. And now your host, John Clay Wolf. Morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Joe, you there? I am here. What are you doing? Oh, just hanging out. Are you for are you, Tuesday? I'm excited about Tuesday. Are you in Florida? Are you in, are you in prison in Florida or in Fort Worth? I'm in Florida. What city? Pensacola. I was in um, Palm, West Palm yesterday. West Palm? Yeah, I should have come yeah. over and said hi. You can, Beautiful down there. You could have showed me your down. Prince Albert. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's for more for Gigi. I'm gonna I'm gonna open up a hot dog stand when I get out and call it the sloppy cock and, and have nothing <laughs> chili dog with a with an onion ring at the end. <laughs> uh, one more time. What is your what 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 is your business? What is your restaurant idea? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up one of them them hot dog stands on wheels that you put next to the beach and call it the sloppy cock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what are you gonna serve? I'm gonna serve foot long chili dogs with the Prince Albert earring on the end with the with the onion ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, for ring, for gay, you're pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> He's like a redneck gay. He's like a rate. I mean, he's like a. 
he's the kind of guy that would be saying bad gay things. Yeah. But he's gay. <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> I give the transgenders in prison hell, man. This is the Tiger King, for those of y'all who don't know who's on the phone with us. It's Joe Exotic, live from the pen. <laughs> So, I mean, do the you gays know. ever get offended with your bad sense of humor? I, you know, I don't get a whole lot of LGBTQ support because, you know, the, the transgenders in prison, you know, I'm I'm okay with that. But, you know, if if you're if you're looking like a girl and you got boobs, but you got a bigger dick print. Hey, and, and, and Joe, we are on national radio. You got to remember that. <laughs> that's <laughs> just, got that's just creepy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what else was creepy was that dude, your old boyfriend with no teeth. That is, that is creepy. That is creepy. <laughs> I mean, as long did, as we're just... Did you see, I mean, well, did you see my two days before Christmas post? <laughs> no. But that dude, I mean, why were you with that dude? I, I mean, I don't want to help. I don't want to help you pick your dudes out. That's not my gig. But you and I become friends, and I want to understand what was it about him that attracted you? What was his name, Maldonado? He had teeth when I started. <laughs> Jesus. Uh. Whoa. Ah, uh, well, we're gonna let that hey, one look, slide he, over. He knew, he, he knew how to weld. He, he knew how to help build the zoo. Just kind of kept him around. <laughs> All right, but you married him. Well, not legally. <laughs> Tell me the truth. Were you guys just strung out on on the smack? Nope, nope. Honestly, not. Uh, Tiger King, Tiger King made it look that way, but absolutely not. You know. Look, I did I did I dabble in meth in my past every once in a while, every once in a while. But you know, you never saw me running the zoo or running my restaurant naked because when I'm, <laughs> you know, that's just what happened. <laughs> the sloppy cock I, bar and grill. I had too much to do to run around naked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but why'd you marry that dude with no teeth, man? <laughs> I want to be better friends with you, but we got to get over this. I got to understand. We, we <laughs> I got to understand. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to go out and get drunk on that. We'll have to talk about that. <laughs> We're on the air with Joe Exotic, aka the Tiger King from prison. How did your court case go last week? Uh, it's Tuesday. It's this Tuesday. Okay. And I'm looking real forward to it because I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely. Uh, show this guy where, where where he went wrong. Hey, but, now, what I'm looking forward to is they have a huge protest that same day at the courthouse, in front of the courthouse. Uh, oh, to get you out of jail? Uh, to try and get, yeah, try and get President Biden to wake up and, and quit sniffing hair long enough for me <laughs> to, to get his attention. <laughs> hey, now, now, some of this is starting to roll back in my mind. I got more questions. I'm, I'm enjoying this time with you that I have to actually ask questions about this about your life. So were, did you have a pocket full of money back then? You know, no. I, I mean, I didn't know if you was paying I, everybody I, I, and y'all were just screwed up. And, and you know, like the, those guys that have a harem around them and they're just paying. <laughs> were you just spending? I, I just visualize you. You had the dope. You had the cash. You had the tigers. <laughs> I had the tigers and I, and, and, and I didn't have no cash and uh, I, I couldn't find any dope. So <laughs> we got the, we got the tiger part right. So the, the, uh, this, the story I'm, the picture I'm painting is, 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 Fairy tale, okay. It, it, it's definitely stretched up. How did that low dude come in the thing? Did he have money, or he? You thought he had money? He pretended to have money. Absolutely, yeah. What a con artist that guy is. And he showed up, and what was his angle? Well, you know, I met him, and and he had me come out to Cal, uh, to Colorado to look at a sanctuary he wanted to buy. Okay. So I went out and looked at it. He had this big old mansion, indoor swimming pool, Ferrari, everything, you know, and. I came back to Oklahoma, and two weeks later, he calls and says, you want to sell your zoo? And I said, no, man. I said, but I wouldn't mind an investor. Well, he was supposed to drop $300,000, you know, and, and for security, he wanted his name on the deed with my mom. Well, we put his name on the deed, and then a week later, he gets arrested in Colorado for strangling his wife and gets put in jail and come to find out everything was rented and he was behind on payments on everything and his name's already on my zoo that's where i went wrong i mean that is a quick version of a long story now that makes sense that is that that that's where i went wrong all right dude well good luck in court on tuesday and uh are you calling us okay. next saturday 
Uh, if I'm still here, I sure will. All right, man. Good talk sure to you. Will. When I get back to Fort Worth, you know, they don't like me talking to y'all. So. Free Joe Exotic. Free Joe Exotic. We'll have to we'll have to talk about franchising that sloppy cock hot dog stand. All right. We'll get a real good ride on that. Thank you, sir. See you, Joe. Be good. Bye. Bye. Oh man, <laughs> he's a that, was, that was interesting. He's always interesting. Yeah, but I, I, I was really meaning what I was saying. Sure, he was skipping it a little bit. Why did he marry that dude with no teeth? Yeah, Bob? but he started out with teeth. Maybe that's why he married him because he ended up with no right, teeth. And yeah. I've heard things about yeah. my dream girl no is teeth. five, is four foot uh, ten with collapsible teeth. Don't. Okay. Mm. Here comes the line. Let's not cross it. All right. Don't ask him why. You just you. lost a listener. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what's happening next Saturday? It's the Foghead Show. Oh, yeah. Yes, foghead.com. Go get tickets. It'll be at the Rattlesnake Roadhouse, Walnut now, Springs, Texas. understand if you're in California or Florida. Come join us. We don't expect you to fly in for it. Take airplanes. <laughs> Come on. The cool part is they're doing a paid, they normally don't do paid meet and greets. They normally do them for free. It's all free. charity. This is all to the charity of Bikers Against Child Abuse. So all the money goes to that. So if you want to go, go to foghead.com or the Rattlesnake Roadhouse in Walnut Springs, Texas. Their website also selling tickets. Yeah, so I think JCW show, you got the link right there. Are they coming up here? Yeah. Okay, cool. At the jcwshow.com thing, the link is right oh, there. Oh, the link's right there. Okay. But yeah, so next Saturday. Saturday, 27th. You can meet John Clay Wolf too there, you know. I know. That's crazy. For free. What? For free, yeah. For Not free. Gigi. Though. No, that's five dollars to meet me. We should charge to meet you. And strippers? <laughs> What'd she say? Will there be salad and strippers? Salad and strippers. <laughs> booze and cigarettes. <laughs> booze. Oh, and cigarettes. cigarettes. Booze. There'll be plenty of booze and cigarettes. Oh, no, will there ever yeah. be? That will be fun. Man, I wish the building was finished. It'd be so cool to, do, to have that thing over there. Um all right, we'll be right back. Is the ne- Wait, where are we? Is the yeah. lightning round next? Yeah. Okay, listen. The lightning round is next. And what that is is where you call in right now. Yeah, it's live. This is recorded crap. It's live, man. Live. 800-800-7234. 800-800-RADIO. 800-800-7234. 800-800-RADIO. What's the number, dude? You say it so fast, man. I can't keep up. Well, can you spell radio? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 800 800 Radio on your phone, and that'll bring you right to me. Give me year, make, model, miles, and tell me if it's average, rough, or clean. Classics, trucks, Jeeps, vets, exotics, like Joe Exotics, left handed cars. Uh, yeah, call in. I'll, I'll, bid, I'll bid your car on the radio right now for America's best car buyer. Give me the VIN.com. Yeah, some people say syndicated shows aren't that good because they don't have that local feel. Right. But you don't skyrocket to the number one weekend spot by sucking. The John Clay Wolf Show. GG. I gotta get. We gotta get. Now I can hear me. Yeah, you're a little low because I have to really crank so, it up. So, okay. Remember that button you were playing with earlier? Of course not. <laughs> that makes too much sense. Let me see. Is this better? Do I sound sound the same? Higher? I sound the same. What mm-hmm. about this one? No, same. Okay. What about what? this one? This one? Keep talking. D- well, I'm talking, but I sound kind of low.
need a whole lot of room, do I? Nope. Who was the only person that did a donut in your old shop and didn't hit the tree? You. There you go. I hit the tree once. What's up, everybody? It's Monday, the day of the eclipse, April 8th, and uh, we got all the rigs out. Ricky mostly brought his camper and his trailer with some dirt bikes and stuff. Uh, Mike Ford's all rigged out in uh, his uh, minivan with uh, his motorcycles. We got the Sprinter ready. I've been challenged by John Clay Wolf, so we're going out to his place, the W6 Ranch, and going to raise some hell. Supposedly, he's got a 10-mile track out there, and uh, we're going to get after it, have some fun, drink some beers after that, maybe barbecue, and then we're going to see the eclipse. That's when the sun goes between, no, the moon. I, I don't know, but it's something that happens up there, and it's going to be pretty cool. It makes it all dark. It makes all the animals want to go to sleep. So uh, watch this. <laughs> Well, here we go. Nerves are kicking in. There's a lot of people. So we brought everybody. We got Daphne and Fifi, Ken, my wife, Margaret. There's another car missing still. They probably got lost getting out here, dude. <laughs> this was way off the beaten path. Well, that's what it's supposed to be. These guys look serious. Why do I feel like you're cheating? Who are all these guys? <laughs> I'm cheating. Todd Slavic. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. How you doing, David? David. Richard, how are you? Hayden, Frank, guys. Nice. Andrew, nice right to meet you. Pleasure. Todd is old BMXer from way back. If you're in a BMX, you remember his name. Hayden is the really good motor car. Well, they're all good. <laughs> but Hayden's won the national enduro title. This is Texas. This is Texas. Texas, 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 Texas yeah. enduro title yeah. pro. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Nine. Only nine. Only nine. Only nine. I lost track. Frederick used to be good, then he started drinking too much. But he's still good <laughs> in spirit. There's nothing wrong. With right on. He's good in spirit. I don't know what to expect, honestly. And this isn't really the kind of riding I do. I do flat track and sport bike riding. This is motocross, so this is more up their alley than mine, but I'm here to have a good time. That's all so, it is, it's just having some good fun time. That's what people that are gonna lose say. So we're just here to have a good time. <laughs> About to do some moto, yeah. Getting closer to the roots here. Gonna go out there and see if I don't get tired in three seconds. Maybe can get three minutes. Y'all didn't know Gas Monkey Motorcycle Team was back already. <laughs> it's, it's a different level though, yeah. not in the good way. Yeah, this is, no, this is the retirement team. Yeah. Cramp B team. Team Cramp. F and A, Fat and L. <laughs> no, that's F and O. F and L, Fat and Lazy. Mike don't have no hair. I feel like I need to shave my head for, you know, sweat control. Dude, help. I wish I would have cut my hair. I'm telling you. Oh, the Kenny's it's screwed. Look at his Kenny's hair. fucked. <laughs> it's already hot. I have to put nothing on for that long. Oh! He's doing a modeling shot. He looks like one of the models. <laughs> Got goon gear and fucking 120. Yeah. Got TTR. Exploratory lap first. That'd be great. That's four laps. I just want to do three. <laughs> Come on, man. It's only 10 miles. Shouldn't take you more than. No. Back to the John Clay Wolf Show, presented by GiveMeTheVin.com. Hit him up right now, 1-800-800-RADIO. 1-800-800-RADIO. This is the John Clay Wolf Show. And this is the lightning round where I bid the cars for GiveMeTheVin.com, America's best car bar. Tom in Pittsburgh, does your Jeep have any rust on it? It's a, what, 13-year-old Jeep? No. No? 12 Jeep Grand Cherokees at cloth or leather? Cloth. Cloth. Average, rough, or clean? Clean. And it has 118,000 miles. It's five grand. Hmm. Okay. Yep. You know, it's weird to say that's that. It, it, it's, it's weird to say that again because, I mean, that's like a normal price. But, like, two years ago, it was like 10 grand. All the, all the norm, <clears throat> normal prices went away into this goofball price mode during this um, inflation thing. And now these cars are coming back down, all of them. Well, Emory, well, North Carolina, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning. What, what city? I got a 2018 next seat. Uh, I'm right outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. Cool, cool. 2000 uh, XTS? XT5, um, Cadillac is SUV. It, is it a, uh, a uh, all-wheel drive or two-wheel drive? 
uh, front wheel drive. Gotcha. And is it a Lux or a premium Lux or a regular? It's just a regular XT5. It's black, very, very clean. Never had kids in it or anything. So, um, I thought you were describing Gigi um, for a minute, but then the kids thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, yeah. very clean. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Never had kids in it. No, he's, a, he's still in his car. Uh, what color are the guts? Yeah, uh, no, it, what, what, what color is black. that? Yeah. Black, black. Yeah. Um, it, it, uh, the interior is like a cream color. 15 grand. Yeah, I got an offer right now at sixteen seven fifty. Um, that's the biggest offer I've got on it right at the moment. I'd take it. I mean, average MMR on it sixteen grand. I just pulled it up while we were talking. This market's adjusting, and here's uh, one. Here, here's one with seventy three thousand miles in Houston that sold for fourteen five. Here's one with seventy six thousand miles that sold in Dallas for fourteen seven fifty. Here's one with eighty thousand miles yeah. that sold for fifteen in Dallas. Uh, Central Florida, twelve grand with forty four. That one must have been rough. Yeah, I, I'm. I mean, uh, I, I'm. I'm. I'm hitting you right. If you get the, if you get paid on the sixteen seven, take it. If you don't, come back to us. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, eight hundred eight hundred seven two three four. Russell on that transit van with sixteen thousand miles. Go to give me the vin dot com and send us pictures because it says it sounds like it was trying to be converted into a camper, but the job was never finished. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Just load it up and give me the Vendoc Tom and take pictures of all that stuff you're talking about so we can see what we're dealing with and what we got to do. My name is John Clay Wolf. I'm by Cars on the Radio for America's Best Car Buyer. Give me the Vin.com. Be right back. You're listening to the most popular Saturday morning show to ever broadcast in America. You're listening to the John Clay Wolf Show. Feel free to call and make your voice heard. 800-800-RADIO. If you missed any of the show, go to jcwshow.com right now and download the podcast. The John Clay Wolf Show. Four minutes. Whoa! Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit! Four laps is 40 miles. Well, what's wrong with that? That's a lot. So are you guys ready? I mean, y'all, you know, yeah. my, my name is on the line here. This is Team Gasma. Yeah. Don't make me look bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you ain't gonna look bad. Well, you just might not win. <laughs> I mean, this was a, it was kind of set up from the beginning. Like, well, we're kind of all here, so I guess we're already winners. Yeah, absolutely. There it's, you go. It's gonna be a fun day no matter what. Yeah, if you don't like it, you can get your ass back in the truck and go to work. <laughs> no, I like, I like riding. You like it? You like it better here? <laughs> yeah. <it's fun. laughs> yeah, you said four or five laps? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right, all right. We'll get out there and be safe. And uh, don't hurt yourselves because uh, I need you working. Race and be careful. Win for Gas Monkey, but be careful so you can work tomorrow. I'm just worried about the soreness tomorrow. Oh, we're fucked tomorrow. We can't walk. 100% we're all rolling hey. in on Bridget's scooters. He's hey. got three of them, so we're good. You bet your ass I'm going to call in and say I got food poisoning. <laughs> food poisoning oh, tomorrow. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> it's called the track flu. When you don't show up for work the next day, you got the track flu. Well, I might not show up tomorrow because I'm going to have some cold beers while y'all are running around on dirt bikes. That's what I need right now to calm my nerves down. I need yeah. cold beer. No, you can't be drinking it right Damn it. It's not. There's no DWRs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Be careful out there. Safety's first. This is rocky and it's slick. For those of you who have not ridden the course, give yourself a little time to get used to it. I've got a starting line cut up in the grass up here. We're going to start from the starting line, and the starting motion is going to be real simple, okay? This is about 15 seconds. This is about 10 seconds, and then I'm going to drop it, okay? This isn't a AMA sanctioned event. If any of y'all take off before I drop my arms, I'm gonna hit you with a rock in the head when you pass me, okay? <laughs> All right guys, so here we go. First annual John Clay Wolf's cross country race with Gas Monkey. And uh, all of us are fat and old, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> are you going for the win? Uh, it's gonna determine after the first corner where I'm at and if I have arm pump already after the first corner. I'm going for Wednesday. <laughs> I'm going for Wednesday, not the win. Just I want to make it to Wednesday.
we are at the starting line. We're fixing to get going. They're fixing the ribbon. And uh, this has already started to start the eclipse. We're about uh, a quarter of the way in, and uh, we're going to finish this race right as it goes totality. So get you some of that. know this song of course i play it on the radio i had the 45 man Gigi, do you know this song i'm just being real quiet i'm just gonna blend into the scenery why i have no clue what this is oh no. we'll play the chorus here in just a second it's phil collins is who it is and it was an 80s hit and it's called this uh, is, is this the chorus no it goes along with the bit that we were doing in the beginning you'll hear it Wonderfully Dude. White Moments so brought true. to you by John Clay Wolf I, I and his friends. No, it's Phil Collins, not me. Genesis. Uh, that's, Genesis. That's Genesis. Well, he could sing that song too, right? Because he's a legal alien, right? Wasn't he? Not what Phil we think Collins. about. He was for a while. Yeah, for a while he's from. Okay. He ran to Denmark so he didn't have to pay so many English taxes because yeah. they taxed the hell out of musicians there. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I had a... I had a weird thing happen to me this week. Last Sunday. Just this week? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bryce, th- throw up that slide of the Rattlesnake Trail. Um, and we, I got invited with some people, and we went on a car cruise. Ooh. And, of course, my car didn't make it and had to get towed. <laughs> no, again. Again. <laughs> Every time. Every time. When we were going along, we were going about 70, and I started feeling this vibration. I told my wife, look, look at the screen. Oh, you can see the JCW oh, show. Tire yeah. gone yeah, again. Blue tire. tire yeah. You weren't tough on tires. <laughs> I guess. So we, we get to, uh, we, we were traveling around bar to bar, town to town, and it was super duper fun. But I get a call when I'm sitting at the last stop, and it's from a guy that doesn't call me. I'm like, hey, man, uh, I'm sitting here with a bunch of people. I can't talk right now. He's like, I just want to let you know Washabaugh died. Mm. I'm like, okay. And I'm sitting there, and my wife's right there, and I didn't want to tell her because I was afraid she might really take it hard. Sure. I handle those things a little better than others, uh, or differently. I don't know, better. And so... Who's Washabaugh, by the way? Washabaugh is one of my best buds from 15 years old, and he was oh. a radio co-host with us for a while. He did the Daily Nooner with us for about a year, and he was uh, just one of those really fun, funny, cool guys. But he didn't like to work much. So he always just kind of bounced around and he partied too much. Um, what's my point? Oh, here was the worst part, dude. Mm. Is that dude's like, uh, I said, has anybody told his ex-wife? Because she's the mother of his two kids. Sure. He said, no, I don't think so. So I sent her a text. Did you hear? And she wrote back, hear what? I was like, uh-oh. Yikes. So I got up from the table, and I went out in the parking lot, and I called her. And she was playing pickleball with her kids. Oh. 
Jesus. And she really, it really hit her hard. She, I mean, she's like, what am I supposed to? She, she mm-hmm. you know, freaked out. Is that the right word? I don't sure. know. Yeah. Yeah, I call it freaked out. I mean, so what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? I mean, and I was sitting there, I was like, and she's in Iowa. And I'm like, you need to gather your kids up, gather yourself up, go home, hold it till you get home, and then tell them is what I would do because you're in a public place. And I am too. I mean, I'm in the same spot she was at. I was sitting there with a bunch of party people. This was Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. About four o'clock. And he just died, dude. Just... I mean, he just died. Like, his ex-wife, who is still his girlfriend. Wasn't sick. Just laid down. She went over to see him, and they were going to go out. And she said she walked in there, and he was sleeping. And I think she laid in bed next to him and didn't realize it. And oh. then realized it. Man. He's dead. He's dead. I've had two friends die that way. Just go to bed, fine, nothing else going on, didn't wake up. It's weird. How old were they? 52 and 57. I'm sure it was a heart attack. I'm get, I'm not sure of anything, but, but sure. I mean, <clears throat> you know, when, when you first hear that, you're like, oh my God, I hope he didn't off himself. He, no, no. And, and, I mean, well, that's my first sure, reaction, sure. right? And that is not the case. He just died. Yep. Could be an aneurysm or a heart attack. That's right. Haven't heard yet, but... And then, you know, he's single, and his he doesn't have any brothers or sisters, so I'm like... In the middle of this, sure, because I'm a good friend. Years, buddy. And his mom calls me, and we're like, she's handling it all, but but she doesn't want to have the service until she has the ashes in her hand. I'm like, just put a fake urn up there. That's what we did with my dad. Sure, no one's because it know. took a month to get the ashes mm-hmm. back. And she's like, I'm not doing it. She's like, I want the preacher to bless the ashes, and I'm not doing it, so there won't be a funeral for three weeks. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And I was like, and I told Gay, I was like, I was like, what you're feeling today. And what you felt yesterday will continue mm-hmm. until this service happens. You, this, you cannot start healing until after this service happens. Because every day will be a new day of, oh my God, he's dead. And we've got to get, you know, that moment when people come in the house and all this, that will go on for three weeks. And she's like, I don't care. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, she's real religious. And she's like, he's going to bless the ashes. And we're not doing it until then. I'm like, okay. Yes, ma'am. So. Yeah, but did, I asked y'all to pull some washable stuff from the past. Did you? Did, what did you find? Yeah, we we, we found some stuff. Uh, three clips, really, and they I think they're fitting for for who he was. I mean, he was a fun guy, right? And, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, a little bit of a party or two, right? He's the one that wrecked the four wheeler. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Just a month, a month or so yeah. ago. Yeah. It's always something with him, dude. So always. You remember in 2020 when COVID was going around, sure. and no one could find weed. You remember that? I don't remember that. You don't remember that? <laughs> I wasn't looking well, for weed. Me and Bob will remember that. But <laughs> you do. Washabaw did. Yes. Yeah. Wash, you remember Washabaw had that dirt weed called Tomahawk? <laughs> I don't remember. You don't remember that? <laughs> but I believe you. Yeah, yes. He called it Tomahawk. Yeah. And it wasn't just, it wasn't the best grass you could find in normal circumstances. So you got a cut of that? So we, we were riffing on it on the show. So, cause I can't believe you don't remember him having that tomahawk weed anyway. You don't remember that? He, he got a lot of it and he was selling it pretty cheap because he realized it wasn't like, you know, Colombian gold. Right. He was selling it like just to his friends. Yeah. Yes. Bob, well, well, play this. I want to hear this. So this is a Keith Richards who actually bought some of Washabaugh's dirt weed here. Okay. Your friend Washabaugh's. Gonna have a bone picked with him, right? Uh-huh. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I've got to pick your bones or something like that. Uh-huh. I've got to. Oh, right, right. Got a right. bone to pick with you. You didn't. Did he sell you some weed? Let me try it out. Oh, I've got a bone to pick with you. Wash it off. <laughs> oh, no. Right? <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. No, I mean, it was dirt cheap. It was like $40. Yeah. They said it was called uh, Indian Axe or something like that, right? Tomahawk. Tomahawk. Indian Axe. Tomahawk. He gives it an aggressive, manly name. <laughs> yeah. And then you smoke it and you're like, Oh, I'm not high at all. I think Washable burned me. <laughs> <laughs> it makes your voice higher. Oh. oh. I think I actually began to grow mandibles. <laughs> Is that what they're called? Mandibles? Mandibles. Boobs? Right. Yeah. Boobs. 
<laughs> and I was only high for like 20 minutes, a half hour like that. <laughs> I, I did eat a dozen jelly donuts. Do you have any? So it works, worst? but it doesn't work. Ah. No, I mean, it's not the kind of weed you use for the Doobie Brothers. You need serious red-haired Colombian weed. Okay. Not marijuana, not grass. Weed. So that, you know, I can't believe you don't remember that. Because we even riffed with it even further where we had the dope report about his weed. <laughs> you know all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do, wait, I don't want to hear all that. Do you have any with his voice? Do not. No, I could not find that. I did find also the Washabaugh show open. Do you yeah, he said, this? what if I start my own show, Joe? Let's play that. Okay, so everybody knows what the Cheech and Chong song, Basketball Jones. You know this song? Oh, yeah. Possible okay. Time. Yeah. So I tried to get Wash Washabaugh wanted a radio career. Correct. So I was helping him get his chops down, and I like gave him a time on that little station to do his own show, and it was the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I don't do you know. That? Yeah. Dude, that's like 14 was, years ago. Yeah. Or maybe this song that you produced here called the Washabaugh <laughs> Show. Washable show. He wants the washable show. We love the washable show. So, baby, ooh. Oh, God. <laughs> How long ago was that? That was a, 14 years ago started. at least. He just asked Wolfman, I want to work the phones. I do anything, Wolfman. Just let me work the phones. I promise I won't drink too much. And one day, I let Washaball in the studio. And we let him work them phones. He worked them phones with all he had. But he still drank too much. <laughs> that Washaball was like a Washaball to me. I keep Washaball under my pillow. Sometimes that's why I don't sleep so good. But now Washaball's getting all big-headed. And he thinks he's ready for the big time. Washable show. <laughs> we gotta get Washable back in check. He ain't ready for the big time. He can't carry his shows. He goes to the phones too much. That Washable, he drinks too much. He's bagging on him. Please, please help Washable. He needs help. He ain't ready for the big time. It all started back when Aaron started mixing cocaine. That is, oh my God! You that at all? I couldn't. Th th this made my day. Okay, good. <laughs> that helped me. That was one of those Fridays where we like got in the studio at around two in the afternoon mm -hmm. yeah. and worked on that till about seven. <laughs> and you just were banging on him because the show was so bad. <laughs> Dude, I forgot all about that. Yeah. R.I.P. Washabal. R.I.P. Yeah. Washabal. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's. Oh. This is the actual version here of All Basketball right. Jones. We'll be back in a minute. My name's John Clay Wolf, and uh, this is the Washabal Show. <laughs> and I love that basketball. I took that basketball with me everywhere I went. The John Clay Wolf Show. What have you got there? Divine inspiration. Want more of the John Clay Wolf Show? Check out the largest radio show and fastest growing podcast at jcwshow.com. This is the John Clay Wolf Show.
y'all that didn't have any faith in me. I made one lap. Some people didn't even make that. So, I, pretty much they ran off and left me. And then uh, I got lost. Do you know where we're going? Clearly not the right way to go. Kelsey got lost. There was a split back there, and I went this way. We maybe should have gone the other way. Yeah, I don't know where the fuck we're at. So, we decided it was probably safer just to come back and drink beer. So, we're here. I'll take the L on this one, but a win on the first beer. <laughs> so, uh, Kenny and Mike Coy are out. Uh, so far, uh, Ricky came in third on the first lap, and uh, I hear a lot of motorcycles running all over this giant piece of land. Remember, it's a 10-mile track, and we are... It's like about 20 minutes to the full eclipse. The, what do they call it? The totality. <laughs> If nobody's got hurt, they're doing fine. <laughs> God, I hope you got that on camera. <laughs> yeah, if nobody got hurt, they're doing good. I think you're losing. I'm 100% losing. I ate shit a while ago and fucked my arm up. Oh, wow. Super cool. John Clay, you're a true American badass because I caught you and you fucking walked me again. So, woo! It is gone. Look at how dark it is. Wow. Look at that. Take the picture. They're racing in this out there. Yeah. Do it. Do what the heart desires. If they want to do it. Oh no! Whoa! Look at that. Are you kidding me? This is fucking awesome. cool is this? Oh, I don't know the track already. Now I can't see the track. This sucks. largest weekend morning show. It's so big. Call John, toll free, 800-800-RADIO. And check out the podcast at jcwshow.com or johnclaywolf.com. Give me the vent. The John Clay Wolf Show. Whiskey bottles. I'm still laughing about that washerball Cheech and Chong show thing. Hey, next week, because his funeral in for two weeks. Well, let's grab some audio of him on the nooner so people know who the hell we're talking about. Um... This week's backtracks. This is all 420 uh, music today, by the way. That smell, you get it? <laughs> so, long story short, in honor of 420, let's get groovy with a selection of backward tunes from the Grateful Dead. Sure. And you call in 800 800 7234 800 800 radio to guess what these two dead tunes are run backwards. Hmm. That first one's kind of hard. Cut A little one. bit. Cut one. Do it again, will you? So what you're doing is guessing these songs that were running backwards. They're dead songs. Call in 800-800-RADIO and tell us what they are and you win the stuff. Cut two. I think that one's easier to guess yeah. for me. Cut two. Yeah. 
guys on the uh, fans on the uh, web chat I'm looking at you y'all got the right one on the on the second one okay so what's the story on the dead okay it's 420 so Grateful Dead is is great uh, token up music by the way that's long story short long story long this day in 1971 five high school students in San Rafael California met after school at 420 p.m. with a plan to search for an abandoned cannabis crop They'd gotten a, like a treasure map from the from the actual grower. They never did find a field of marijuana, but the phrase 420 stuck within their little group of friends and evolved into a code word that they used to refer to consuming cannabis. Hey, it's 420. Let's toke up, right? So one of them, a guy named Dave Reddix, later worked as a roadie for the Grateful Dead on many shows that they did in Marin County in the early and mid-'70s. He shared that phrase, 420, time to smoke pot with countless musicians producers and hangers on around a lot of rock and roll bands and by 1980 it was starting to be used worldwide 420 marijuana time right soak up johnny smoke them if you got them so yeah this day in 71 those five guys invented they coined the phrase 420 now yeah. every, now everybody's got their own little terms too you didn't have your term, Bobo, when it's time to smoke with your friends? I think it's time to have a good conversation with Mary. Yeah. Mary Jane, last dance with Mary Jane. Yeah. What right. Mine would be, uh, well, let's go shoot some hoops real quick. Shoot play some hoops. basketball. <laughs> <Shoot hoops. laughs> That's what it was. It's, it was perfect. I remember Carter was, um, somebody was mailing him some when we were in college from Colorado, and he was calling the guy. He's like, hey, man. You got that new Green Day CD? Ah, that's good. <laughs> Very nice. And that was their code. He said, I want to buy one of those Green Day CDs. What about your pre-K? What's going on? What was your code when it's time to go smoke? Oh, uh, me and my homies used to say we're going to go play baseball. Oh, yours is baseball. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The athlete you are. <laughs> you already know. Right. So, Turley was hoops and you were baseball. Carter is... Green Day and Bobo is Mary Jane. Conversation with Mary. What about you, Gigi? We just went to smoke. We didn't have no code words. <laughs> no code words. <laughs> no code words. Let's do it. You know what I mean? So that's Let's white people things, it. then, huh? Yeah. Again. <laughs> uh, Mark in Little Rock, Arkansas. What are your guesses on the two songs run backwards? Uh, I would say it's uh, Master of Puppets, and uh, the other one is this. Uh, slapping puppies in the closet. I'm pretty sure that's right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Cody in Mississippi, what are your two guesses on the songs run backwards? Cody, you there or did I lose you? Yeah, is it Sweet Home Alabama and Rambling Man? Nope. Everybody's high right now. Yeah. <laughs> wow. They miss it. They're Grateful Dead songs. Cut one. We played again. Turn. Cut two. <laughs> Melinda, New York. Good morning. What are your guesses? Uh, it was Sugar Magnolia and Riding That Train. No, man, but at least you got Grateful Dead. Those yes. other guys, Master of Puppets and something with puppies. That was weird. <laughs> Are you in New York or is your phone just registered in New York? Uh, yeah, yep. How do you know us from New York? We've never been on up there. Oh, uh, well, we're traveling and we happen to be listening to the radio station <laughs> in Pennsylvania and it came through and we've been listening to you for an hour. At least. Uh, well, good. That means you like it. It sticks. So when you get back home yep. and you don't have the radio, you can go to jcwshow.com on Saturday mornings. You can stream it there. Okay, cool. Ride along, baby. Ride along. Ride that train. Thank you, Melinda. We you play the one? cuts again? Yeah. First one. Left, left, Cut two. <laughs> North Carolina, what have you got? You're on the air. You're on the air. Yeah, the first song, Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb, and the second one, Rambling Man. <laughs> is that the joke? Is like everybody's so yeah, stoned that they can't, you. they can't hear the instructions? Okay, that's funny. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I'm with them. Here. Tulsa, Oklahoma, you're on the air. Yeah, uh, the first one is Touch of Gray, and the second one is Trucking. Trucking is correct on right the second on number one. two. Right on the 
John in New York. Here's another New Yorker. Are you are you registered? Is your phone up in New York? Or are you really in New York? Yeah, no. Yeah, phone's up in New York. I live in Stewart. Where, what's Stewart? Florida? Stewart, Florida. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. What, what are your guesses? Uh, Casey Jones and um, I said earlier, uh, shoot, uh, Uncle John's band. Mm-hmm. Reverse. Uh, mm. Mike, where are you, where, where you be? Mike, you're on the air. Oh, yeah. Where I'm you? in Mississippi. Mississippi. Okay, hit it. What are your two guesses? Uh, Uncle John's fan in trucking. Yeah. You, you win. What's he yeah. win, Bob? I got a great double CD edition of The Grateful Dead live in Europe in 1972. Damn. From Born Late Records. And you're sending that to Mike in Mississippi? Yeah, and he's going to get a uh, JCW Show t-shirt, some stickers, and whatever else we can get. Maybe one of these nifty coffee cups. That yeah, those are yeah. kind of expensive. Yeah. You sure? But you can, <laughs> no, they're not expensive, but you can buy them online. You can buy them. Where do you buy them? At the, go to the John, say, John Clay Wolf Show uh, website. JCW yeah. Show. Yeah, JCW, JCW Show. show. Yeah. That's hey, how man. it's easy to remember. And Pre-K got his own uh, his own JCW Show fog hat. Fog hat? What do you mean? Hat. No, fishing hat, not fog hat. Are you high? <laughs> Is it not a fog hat? <laughs> oh, wow, you've got oh, one, too. Are we pushing merch now? Yeah, yeah. I want one. Damn it. I want one. Okay, Gigi, you deserve one. I didn't realize we were Thank pushing you. merch. Cool, man. We're going to change the name of the show to Merch Monkey. <laughs> That's right. What, did y'all get inspired from Rollins pushing all his merch? Maybe yes. a little. Whose idea was this? IT Rob. Okay. Thanks, IT Rob. He's a genius, man. Huh. All right. Are we out of time? No, we're not out of time. We got a minute. All right. So Mike is on six. He won it. Trucking. It is 420. Oh, April yeah. 20th. And, uh, I'll take him down there, smoking in the background. I do like these coffee cups, though. Yeah. So you got a GMTV garage one. Yeah. And you, you got a uh, you got your water thing. Water, cool, yeah. Water cup. Thing. I got a Vindex one here. The Vindex, and I've got the hey, W6 nice. Ranch one. There you go. Gigi, I, I, I didn't know about any of this. I showed up here, and it was just yeah. here. I did okay. not know. We never... We never have. I like them though. Yeah. Okay, so Fog Hat is coming. We're doing a um, show, a special show for Baca Bikers Against Child Abuse next Saturday. So guys that like Austin and Dallas Fort Worth, you know, in 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 between, Walnut Springs is the Rattlesnake Roadhouse Bar. That is our bar. That's our hangout. You always hear us when we're out here in the ranch, the studio. We go to town. That's where we go, and it's a three hundred seat venue, and. Fog hat's coming next week. Rock and roll, man. Great Saturday. Rock and roll. And they're giving them, they're not giving away, they're selling, uh, what do they call it? Uh, meet and greets? Yeah. Meet and greets. And all that money goes to this charity, Baca Bikers Against Child Abuse. You can go to jcwshow.com to grab tickets. We still have some tickets left. Do not wait till the last minute. But Walnut Springs is about an hour from Fort Worth. 45 minutes, 40 minutes from Waco. It's two hours from Austin. It's about an hour and a half from Dallas. Get a room in Glen Rose, Texas. Get a room, get a room, get a room. Because there's no rooms in Walnut. So, get a room. But we're going to be hanging out down there next week with Fog Hat. And they'll be on the show next Saturday. And it'll be great to meet some of you guys. So, go get tickets now if you want to meet us and donate money to a really good cause please grab some of those meet and greets even if you don't care about meet and greet them donate it to Baca Bikers Against Child Abuse and we'll be right back
go. Give some daylight back, boys. Everybody's probably already back in the truck making fun of me because I ain't there. If I heard it right, one guy stopped because he couldn't see. One guy's come in, finished all three laps. A couple guys came in, didn't finish all three laps. And uh, it got real dark up here above the trees. So imagine how dark it was down there when the uh, path of totality descended upon this great valley here in the state of Texas. I got garage beers for any of my people that come across. That's our boy Ricky. I think he's in a solid third place, maybe even second. I'm not sure who all finished everything. I got one question for you. Did it get dark down there? Yeah, it got real dark. It, it got, got real moving. dark. Well, pick your flavor. Woo! I go with lime. Going with the lime. Oh my Cheers, god. Cheers, buddy. That's badass, wasn't it? Oh my god, those guys are gnarly. That's that, a was, that was the gnarliest thing I've ever done, riding in the woods when the sun goes down. No. During an eclipse, the sun was still up there. You did it, baby. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. It got so dark, I had to take my tinted goggles off. My boots are full of water. My butthole is red. Yourself? It's raw. No. <laughs> no. Boots are full of water and his butthole's red. Not there you go. Commentary from Ricky. Oh, my God. They didn't invite us out here to race. They invited us out here to quit. <laughs> <laughs> that does not... I figured he already quit. No, no, he's, he's still out there. I saw him go around in a he, second. Hey, he said he fell three or four times. Cheers, brother. Thank you. Take a break. Talk to your lovely wife. I'm gonna go back up here where Man. the crawfish are. I tell you what, not getting to take a sight lap, riding completely blind with some true. Man, that was that was really tough. I didn't know where I was going, and then when I thought I knew where I was going, I would just blow it because it wouldn't be where I think I was going. And I was trying to go fast. That was tough. This is the gnarliest thing I've ever done. I can't move my hands. Let's celebrate with a garage beer. I can't even hold it. It's empty. <laughs> I don't know who's a gizzy anyway. Last place you get an empty drink. You want to laugh. Well, I felt like I was out there by myself for the past know, fucking hour. I was like, everybody leave, go home. Like, am I on the am I going in the right place? Am I even on the same property that Couldn't I saw? Couldn't see off? when the thing took off. Dude, I've never rode a recluse clutch, and I probably never will again. Yeah. That's the most miserable riding I've ever done. Yeah, it was pretty miserable. I felt for you. It I, beat you. It's awful. Bro. It bit the reckless clutch is boo boo well, boo boo. That and this track punishes speed. Absolutely punishes you if you try to go fast. Well, I was trying to cruise and it still wasn't working. So these guys are wicked. I should have known better than that. And they, this was a setup. Bro. I didn't quit. Like, good job. I, I, I fell like 50 times. <laughs> I fell so many times. I can't touch bad. out there, dude. Whoa! Cold beer for you. The fish. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? What's up? How was it out there, man? Dude, it was a lot of fun, but my hands got wet the first lap. First lap. Well, well you're wearing gloves. I went to the, that was a problem. They didn't ever dry. Look, they're just like pruned up. So I was just trying to hold on the whole time. <laughs> I'm really not that tired. Like, I mean, I'm, I was out of breath, but still probably could have went. I don't, really don't have arm pump. I just couldn't hold the grip. You guys it was crushed fun. it. You finished. On a course that these guys knew, and John designed. John didn't finish. Uh, he broke uh, his uh, shifter, and uh, I had beat to John. Out. Yeah. Oh, that's good because I fell behind him and he disappeared, and I thought he just beat me that bad. <laughs> Ricky said that if this was snow skiing, that that's a black diamond. The track was pretty fucking gnarly. <laughs> uh, the rocks beat my ass. I wasn't right because I yeah. like every time I'd come in there, like everything was so slick. The rocks would just knock the bars out of my hand. Yeah. Every single time. Did it get dark during the eclipse? I couldn't see it. Fucking Nobody thing. could, man. I took my goggles off yeah, and was just could. riding around. I was like, fuck! I stopped and looked at the yeah. fucking thing. I took the camera and held it up and looked at it. <laughs> Did you notice the light on your motorcycle at all before the eclipse? The one on the handlebar? Yeah. No. I know, that thing was a glow so in yeah. the eclipse. I was like... Did you have a headlight? No. Uh -uh. You didn't ride that bike? Uh-uh, I rode 350. Yeah, How no. did you do that and not mess up your hair? You know. 
That was what was hard, is actually trying to do the course and keep my hair all good. You there know? you go. Well, I know you guys are hungry, so get up here and get some burgers and crawfish and corn and potatoes. I felt for you, man. <sighs> it's all because of this. I wasn't like this until I started drinking beer. <laughs> so, cheers, guys. My boys finished all three laps on a fun. track they've never seen. That was fun. That was described as hell on uh, Earth. Uh, Ricky actually said that uh, if it was snow skiing, it would be a black diamond. Yeah. And he said that you didn't invite him out here to race. You invited him out here to quit racing. <laughs> <laughs> and I did ask y'all to come yesterday to practice, but no, everybody's too smart for that. No, no, it's not that they're too smart. These guys are married with kids and stuff. <laughs> but it's a uh, that, that track's a beating. Yes. Yes, I'll yes. give it to you. You said it. 420 Presidential Address. We take you now live to the Oval Office. Any conviction at all for marijuana, your record should be wiped clean. But we have to, there is evidence that we have to do some more study on the impact on mental acuity. It's just, it's a, when you think about it. <laughs> Thank you for watching C-SPAN's special 420 presidential address. Time for the John Clay Wolf Show. Presented by GiveMeTheVin.com. Call John. Toll free. Cheap bastards. 1-800-800-RADIO. And check out the podcast at JCWShow.com. Now the reason we're here. This reminds me of Rush Limbaugh. As man and woman he used the pretenders as his intro. You know our publicist, Bobo Amir? Did you know she was Rush Limbaugh's publicist? Isn't that right? Uh -huh. She did a damn good job. She used to handle all his heat. And she has never... I asked her that. I said, you know, Bobo has the best Rush Limbaugh impersonation of all time. Oh, yeah. And yeah. she's like, oh, I got to hear that. We haven't heard from him in a while. I wonder how he's doing in heaven. We, we can talk to Rush about 420. John. Yes. Good That's, morning. My God, man. Where, where have you been? been right here man Where are you, you uh you having a good time i'm having the best time ever i love being here on saturday mornings i'm glad you came in it's uh I'm, i get, I get now, look you probably haven't heard of this okay uh there's a little uh, uh celebration we have uh, up here in heaven mm -hmm. charlie manson told me about it <laughs> uh the uh stop laughing turkey it's a serious serious radio business <laughs> uh it's it's uh, up here we call it 420 Okay. 420. <laughs> Wait, look. Right. You know what we do? Do you know what we do? <laughs> what do you do? On 420, do do? April 20th, <laughs> to be precise, yeah. here at the uh, home of the Golden Gates. Sure. For my old uh, St. Louis days. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know what we do? What? Smoke pot. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Once I get back, get not look. Uh, when I was alive, and I certainly was, fair-haired boy, oh, clean-cut, I would I would drink the scotch, and uh, I took a lot of pills. We heard. Don't be don't be judgmental. <laughs> uh, they were prescribed by a physician, uh, several, and they uh, got me just high as the bee Jesus, which was fine. For a while, and I, 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 some people said that I, I, the, the pills changed me. Uh -huh. uh, they didn't, uh, but they did make me enjoy eating a lot more, and I lost my uh, level of activity and uh, I, I gained a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> see. And uh, then I, I didn't drink scotch for for nine years uh, because the pills were enough. <laughs> Thank you. <Ryan. laughs> Besides all that, you don't need pills. Just uh, here's what you do uh, here in heaven. Yeah. And we're all doing it. All the best people up here in Hubbard. Okay. Smoke pot. Just do it. Just do it. Go and find your your, your brother-in-law, probably your Uncle Pete. Uh, the guy's working at the car wash. Oh, yeah. Beautiful day. <laughs> <laughs> They're all high to the beat Jesus on, on marijuana. Uh, this is my recommendation to you from El Rushbo. Talent on loan from God. Thank you, Rush. You know what? He was on point. Why Bobo was so on point? Well, he watched a documentary. We watched Phil Hendry. Yeah. And Rush was in that. 
And I could, I, you just channeled Rush again right there. The old Rush. Yeah, the old Rush yeah. is in there. My Rush impersonation comes straight from late 80s, early 90s yep. Rush Limbaugh. But I've listened to him for 30 years. Right. You know, so. Yeah, you, that documentary is really good, by the way. If is you're it? a Phil Henry, you know who he is, right? Sure. You know, David oh, Hall, him. David Hall coached him. David Hall's all over that documentary. Is he he really? makes like yes. six appearances. David Hall's part of our show. Well, also. what happened was that we liked him a lot. He was a really good guy, but I, I think we fi- we had to fire him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the documentary called? It's called Henried. Henried. H e n r e i d. Phil Henried would talk to himself, and then he's he a radio would... broadcaster. He's only overnight radio broadcaster that had crazy impersonations, and he would call in. We don't have a cut of it, do we? No. Um, we don't. He'd call in on the phone to himself. Yeah, and he would m- switch between the phone and the mic, and he would have these conversations and these different voices, and it was amazing. Yeah, and every character he did was a despicable person with a really offensive problem and/or point of view. <laughs> and then callers would call in, and they would just lambast the guest, mm-hmm. and Phil Henry would switch back and say, "Well, now listen, to maybe she has a point of view. I don't care what I want to kill that woman." Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then Bobby Doo was like. Well, you only want to kill me because you're stupid. <laughs> and that's yeah. Phil. Yeah. Phil is Phil, and he's Bobby Dooley, and the callers just go ape nuts. Yeah, and it was it's yeah. like a big 10-year joke he played on talk radio. Look look how vulnerable you are. Gigi, did you ever hear him? Oh, yeah, I loved him. Bobby Dooley and her square feet. Well, how many square feet do you have? And his gay man. Well, I'm a gay man, and I'm a gay man, and you oh, my God, I love him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's good. 800-800-723-4800-800 radio. What do you have in the news, J.D. Ryan? Well, we're going to do mail from jail, weren't we? Yes. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Hey, Johnny. What's up, bud? John, this week's mail from jail entry reads, Howdy, y'all. My name's Terrell. I'm currently serving my last 22 months here in Texas. I discovered your show due to my celly. That's my cellmate. And y'all are some funny mothers. <laughs> I love hearing y'all read mail from jail. We really be going through it in here. But it's nice to know somebody's listening out there. And I'm not crazy like a lot of folks in here. I thought I was just slick enough to get away with breaking the rules. It turns out I was not. I do uh, love the mail, but what I love hearing even more is Gigi's smooth, buttery voice coming through those airwaves. Every time she talks, I melt. And time goes by a little slower, which I'm not sure is a great thing in here, but it makes me count the days, the number 793, until I'm free, baby. And Gigi, I know you don't know me, but I promise you'll want to. I'm a 47-year-old biracial man. My mama's black, my daddy's Cajun. I've got a chest full of her and a weak spot for long, tall women. Ooh. And I'm no porn star, but I know how to treat a lady like you. <laughs> I want you to know I lay in my cell at night and think about you. Golly. And I wrote this poem oh. just for you. When I'm in my cell at night, I dream of holding you so tight. Hmm. No walls or fears, just you and me. Close, like we're supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> Your silky voice caresses my ears And melts away the tattoo tears oh. It's true, I want to be your man Because I'm already your biggest fan oh. Oh. Please write me back, it would mean the world to me Your biggest fan and future, question mark, man <laughs> Terrell <laughs> LeBlanc, Ramsey Unit, Rose Shore in Texas Wow. Gigi, would you date wow. would you date an ex prisoner? No. Would you? What? No. No. If you've got a mail from jail entry, just send that along to P.O. Box 471517. That's in Fort Worth, Texas. The zip code is 76147. Coming up next is the lightning round. So call in with the cars, 800 800 723 800 radio And I will bid your car on the air and make you an offer and do a deal right here at 800-800-7234. And that is on behalf of GiveMeTheVin.com. Is this party on the patio? It is. God. You had a party on the patio last week, didn't you? Or two weeks ago now. Was that two weeks ago? Time's been flying. Mm-hmm. 
You know what's weird about like I was in Florida this week? You know what I wanted to do? Get home. Well, that's good. Yeah. There's just nowhere I'd rather be. I, I literally never drove to the beach. I didn't see anything. No. I just went in there. I went to Barrett Jackson in a, in Palm Springs. Yeah. Went to the auction. Went to eat. Went to sleep. Got up. Got the hell out of there. You I got a pretty nice place here. <laughs> Let's be I, honest. This is the most comfortable place yeah, I can think of. In the world. It's this beautiful. studio, it made our show better. Oh, no doubt. Isn't that weird? Yeah, no doubt. It's a good thing you don't drag me along on these deals with you anymore, or you would have a totally different trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember a few to Houston. Totally. Oh, yeah. oh, California, man, oh, for six God, days. California was fun. Boy. Uh, if yeah, I'd have called no. you and said, hey, I'm running to um, Palm Beach to go to an auction, you want to go with me, would you want to go? Yeah, I got a laptop. I right. can, if I can get my Mondays and Tuesdays down, I'm fine. All right. I can do anything else from anywhere. If, if you can do yeah, I, I just never even thought of it because I figured that you had to do all this stuff. I don't know. It's gotta work. I ain't begging, man. No, I'm no, no, just no, saying. no, 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 no. I'm just saying. All right, we'll be right back. Remember the car segments coming up next. 800-800-7234. This show is also brought to you by Gordon Boswell Flowers. Around the corner or across the country, Gordon Boswell is the nation's best florist, and you can link up to them through and get a discount through jcwshow.com, where the podcast lies, the YouTube stream lies, the live stream that's on right now, and the tickets for the Fog Hat concert in Texas next Saturday that we're putting on for Bikers Against Child Abuse. You can get them there also. And we're going to give some tickets away after the lightning round to that show also. My name is John Clay Wolf, Black Cars and Radio for America's Best Car Buyer. Give me the VIN.com. Hey, it's Gigi from the John Clay Wolf Show. Do you want the most money for your used car? Do you want a hassle-free process? Of course you do. Give me the VIN will beat your written CarMax offer or write you a check for 100 bucks. It's that simple. Give me the VIN is A-plus rated by the BBB and thousands of online reviews. Get an instant cash offer and the most money for your used car right now at GiveMeTheVIN.com. America's best car buyer. Sell us your car. GiveMeTheVIN.com. So easy you can do it in your eyes. Broadcasting coast to coast. This is the John Clay Wolf Show. Hit up the website for podcasts, merch, and how to contact the crew. Oh, and while you're giving them the finger, give them the VIN. The John Clay Wolf Show. Through the coil. And but the coil is grounded by the by the uh, points themselves. So as they open and close, they break the contact of the negative wire off of the coil. And every time you break the contact, the coil will fire. And then through the coil wire, it goes to the, the distributor and the rotor in the distributor is moving around as it's running. And, and it con, and when, every time the coil fires, it's gonna line up with one of the other plug wires, which will cause the spark, the spark plugs to have a electrical spark. No, no spark. Good spark? No spark. No spark. No spark. Okay. Have we seen any spark out of anything yet? Yes, actually, uh, we've got a couple to fire up. Um, as soon as this one fires, I've got two ready to go to the No, 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 I'm talking about this engine. Oh, this engine, no, no, we haven't got any spark out of it. So this what's was... the difference between points and a distributor? They work together. Right. Dis and so what, what the next level was a distributor with an, a f fire injection system in it? C yeah. C yeah, well, they go to, after this, you know, then after points, then General Motors went to an HEI distributor and and it it rotates just like the cam on the points, only it has a, it's a, a reluctor wheel and a magnetic pickup. And every time the, the reluctor comes by the magnetic pickup, then that, causes an interruption in the power to the coil, which causes it to fire. Right. But to make that work, you have to have an electronic module to amplify that that little... What's that module called? It's... Is it part of it? 
Yeah, Correct. well, it's a it's a component inside of an HEI distributor, gotcha. and it, so it's just a, <clears throat> a spark module or something. Ford used a different setup. They had a big box that mounted over on the, the firearm. Yeah, I remember called those Duraspark. <laughs> So do you think this thing, the distributor's not firing? I think probably the coil's dead or something. If somebody could have left the key on on it Burn years it. ago and ran the battery down and fried the coil. Um, See it flashing? Yeah. So the points are working. Right. But we have no, so we have, we have 12 volt and we, we, and we got ground it's gonna need a coil. So we know now that the points are working. We know that the ignition switch is working. It's getting power, 12 volts or, you know, they're, they're regulated down. If you run straight 12 volts to points, they'll last about three or four days and they'll burn up. We know that the two main components are working, but we have no spark and that points to the coil. So we'll have to remove that and get one and fix it to see. The 80s or late 70s, early 80s, then you start having metric bolts, but the engines were designed basically in the 50s and 60s and they all have SAE. So everything, any bolt that screws into the engine is gonna be SAE or... Fighting bolt. And then, then everything on the body will generally be metric and then any accessories like the any bolts that mount to the the parts the dr accessory drive like the power steering pump and the alternator and all that will be metric so it's all mixed up so you you have to be careful this is an old fashioned coil ignition coil yeah you can test these coils with a volt ohm meter by going to vary, uh, various different points from the positive to the negative and the positive to the, the spark terminal and yep. vice versa. Do it right next way. Put your tongue in the hole. Let me put your hand in. Put some power in. This, uh, this is a fuel filter. Um, We've got to get this frame bolt out so this the, the carriage that holds the uh, fuel filter, we can get it down and get the new one in. It's just in a real tight spot. There she went. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Fresh fuel waiting to go in. Now, back to the John Clay Wolf Show, presented by GiveMeTheVent.com. Hit him up right now, 1-800-800-RADIO. 1-800-800-RADIO. This is the John Clay Wolf Show. And this is the lightning round where we buy cars on the radio. Adam in Memphis, good morning. You're on the air. Hey, good morning. 07 Vet, regular, 80 clicks. Standard shift, yes, sir. removable top. Standard shift. Wants twenty five grand and it's worth fifteen. Mm. Worth fifteen? Oh my goodness! Man, That's I'm telling you, the, these COVID prices that is done, done, done. Wow. It's like the it's like the price of Tesla. You know, Tesla I stock was four hundred and now it's a bucket. Bad. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here looking through transactions. We sell these things every week at the auctions. Ninety thousand yeah. miles brings fifteen six. Uh, here's one. 104 brought 13. 60,000 miles, which is 20 less than yours, brought 18.8. 60,000 yeah. miles here in San Antonio brought 17.1. Yours has 80. I'm 15 grand. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I'm just, uh, I was way out of the ballpark. I thought it was worth more than that. Uh, I've got another vet. I've got a C5. I was planning on supercharging and I was going to sell this one and put the funds toward it, but I am going to have to Keep, do something a little different. Sorry about that. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Brandy, a 20 Wrangler Sahara with 55,000 miles. Again, we're, I, I should have looked at this before I took the call, what you're wanting for it. You want 35 grand for it? 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Your name's Brandy? Oh, Brady. Brady. No, duh. I'm Brady. A, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> dyslexia is a bitch in the morning. Uh, Jeep, is it lifted and crazy tricked out or anything good? Nothing. nothing. This is nothing. Stop. Just stop. I'm I'm going to look this up just so I, so I can correct myself if I'm wrong. But it's an unlimited four-door Sahara 2020 yep. with 55. Yep. Okay, so it's a 3. Yeah, point this is like 54. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So 55,000. Average it's MMR. Leather. Average MMR is 30 grand. And that means that's, okay. a, that, that, that's an average of those miles in auction sold all over the country in the past three weeks. Gotcha. I'd gotcha. G- I'll give thirty okay. grand. Thirty grand. Yep. Okay. Thank, All right. Thanks. If sir. I decide to do it, I'll load it up. Thank you, brother. Thank right. you. Eight hundred eight hundred seven two three four eight hundred eight hundred rated. Now y'all, y'all are doing a bit during the break on the live stream. Yeah, they they, they said they want me over on the casting couch with pre K, and we're gonna we're gonna light up. We're gonna toka. Why not? Y'all are gonna smoke dope in the studio. Yeah, the host is gonna go ballistic. Why would that be? This is a guy that orders a salad in a strip club. Yeah, man. That's right. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you can't mm-hmm. smoke you can't grass and you will have to go out on the uh, patio. No, 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 go out on the outside patio. Okay. Like outside. It oh, doesn't need to be in the shop. Him. We want to look the at the outside. cars. The outside. I know it's raining, but I mean, anyway, anyway, you two are going to get on the live stream. Insensitive prick. JCWshow.com and uh, JC and you know, JD and Bob are going to talk to... The guys on the chat deal. If you go to jcwshow.com and hit the YouTube link, you'll see them and you can talk to them. They're going to answer your questions during this next break. My name is John Clay Wolf by Cars on Radio for America's Best Car Buyer. Give me the VIN.com. Be right back. The John Clay Wolf Show. What have you got there? Divine inspiration. Want more of the John Clay Wolf Show? Check out the largest radio show and fastest growing podcast at jcwshow.com. This is the John Clay Wolf Show. What's up, y'all? What's up, uh, everybody watching on YouTube? Uh, this is DJ Pre-K. And Where's Bob. your dope? And JD, this is Officer JD Ryan. Where's your dope? <laughs> Sergeant Ryan. <laughs> the dope's gone, okay? The dope's gone. What y'all got cracking, okay? We're John's, good. Like, <laughs> John's like, y'all go smoke it outside. I'm like, it's raining, man. <laughs> Get my socks wet. That is not happening. I'm not getting my socks these wet. These people. Oh, these God. people. Hey, there's Mr. Man. Hey, say, hey what's up, big say dog? Say hello to hey. our, our YouTube streamers. We got the big man in the building. Um, all right, let's see. What, what y'all got going on, man? Yeah, what are y'all thinking about this morning? Let's see. What's up, Feisty? I see you in the chat now. Oh, feisty. Um, so whenever y'all go to a strip club, what do y'all order for lunch? <laughs> Somebody said bong rips, joints, or edibles. Hmm. What, what do you prefer? To eat? <laughs> yes. You got me really thinking about it. I usually go for it. I played safe with strip club buffets, okay? I usually opt for either the chicken strips or the meatballs. Okay? Okay. Yeah. You don't want to be eating sushi oh. on the buffet at a strip club. No, Lord, you know? no. Yeah, raw fish. Now, uh, what, what do you prefer as far as uh, bong rips, joints, or edibles? To keep to the 420. You know, thing. I'm a you know I'm a I'm a doobie guy, right? Yeah. It's, I mean, I, it's just that's natural. But I have a little wooden pipe, not a Popeye pipe, but an actual wood pipe, and I tend to go that way. Yeah. Because I'm a two hit man. That. Oh yeah, you don't need a whole lot. Well, you know me. Yeah. You know, yeah, it doesn't take yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, well, he's 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 you know. He's I'm good a to cheap, go. Cheap He's date. good to go. 
With me, I prefer, you know, to take a blunt. You know, you can travel with it, um, take it anywhere you want, roll it real quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm a blunt man. Yeah, but, but you uh, roll a blunt like really mellow, man. It's not, there's not too much paper. It's not yeah. too big around. It's not, you know, yeah. you're not gonna choke on it. What's up, Uncle Turkey? Um, Rico Suave, I see you. Let's see if we got any more questions. Rico. Hey, if y'all like this hat I got on, y'all can go to johnclaywolf.com and get your own. You know, we got a whole lot of gear on there. Somebody said we're higher than astronaut jumping on a trampoline. I wish, man. The, the celebration starts after the show. Somebody said fish tacos at the strip club. Oh, y'all hell. Y'all hell. Danger, Will Rob. Swishers or backwoods? Swishers, no doubt. Casting couch nudes, are we riot? You're gonna riot, Savage, okay? <laughs> All right, gravity bong? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I, we finna get back at it. Bubba, you got anything? <laughs> Holla back, baby, okay? 420 on, y'all. Show enough, we appreciate y'all. Keep, hey, and hit that like button if you ain't already, baby. All right, subscribe. I used to work making minimum wage, came up to about $200 a week, and then they would take out $50 in taxes. That's a lot of money if you only make $200 a week, man. That's like kicking Wednesday and Thursday in the ass, okay? $50 a week in tax money? What do I get for my tax money? Get all the free street light in the world. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, give everybody a candle and give my $50 back. The John Clay Wolf Show, presented by GiveMeTheVin.com, broadcasting on air, online, anywhere you are, with a smartphone and an internet connection. Check out the podcast, JCWShow.com. We now return to the John Clay Wolf Show. You want to sit more on my living room floor? And keep here, Bobo. Hey, the uh, Fog Hat Show, we've only got 18 reserve seats left. Ooh, so game. get on them if you want them. And we're going to give two away right now. Two seats, uh, two two GA tickets. It's in Walnut Springs, Texas at the Rattlesnake Roadhouse next Saturday. It's for Bikers Against Child Abuse. 800-800-7234. 800-800-RADIO. And we'll give it away to the fifth caller, man. Caller number five. Caller everybody. number five. <laughs> caller, what's that number, JD? 800-800-RADIO. <laughs> 800-800-7234. And it's going to who? The I forgot. Caller number five, 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 oh, five, five, five. Yeah, yeah. And it. all the info on it's at jcwshow.com. Um, what's this Asian rapper dude? <sighs> Pre K sent this to me. Pre K, jump on here. What, what is this about here? This Asian rap song, man. I just want to say, you know, we think of rap being an American thing, but it's lit all over the world, man. I, Look, we just got to hear it, okay? Play some of that Asian rap for us. All right, so this is on a, I guess, a, a competition show, and he's giving a <laughs> shout yeah. out here, too. Sub down to which site? Hey, 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 hey. Căn nhà chân mây lá, làm sao có giá được trăm cây vàng nè? Có mây lợi bay lá, có mảnh thiếp bay ngay cho chàng nè. Dễ thư ba thư má, mà vui qua xa nếu anh cưới nàng nè. Có mây lợi bay lá, có ơi. Ơi cô em lấy đó à, sao em nỡ làm ngờ? Anh, anh, anh mang theo tiếng đàn cò vấp xuất khó thân thơ. I, I, I can understand Terrence better. Speech impediment Terrence better than this. I, I, I think pre K, you could do this. You don't even hey, have to speak Asian. Lit. I think that's great. Hey, did you ever get your music video done? I mean, I was hoping that we have it done today. Um, I'm still waiting on a couple little changes. So next week, next week, we're going to have dude, a brand it, new. It's been two months. <laughs> Hey, a hoe is a hoe for show for show. You, you can't rush something like this, man. You know, we got to have the right look. I have my name spelled right and all that. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm waiting on my name to be spelled Who's right. Who's doing it? What's up? Who's your producer? Uh, my boy Michael Rashad shot it. All right. Who's doing the edit on it? My boy Michael Rashad. Okay. Well, tell Michael Rashad we get like two, three-minute pieces turned in a day or half a day. 
There's a guy in Brazil, actually, we send footage off to, and he, call, he charges us 50 bucks. He gets them turned around in three hours. So Mike Rashad needs to get on the gas. <laughs> Hi, damn, I need your guy's number, John. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. What is pre-K paying him? You're paying him weed, right, probably? Uh, <laughs> I gave him a little bit, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly why <laughs> it's taking so long right there. I gave him a little cash, a little bud. You know, well, it's all green. If he's not getting you edited, tell Bryce to send it down to that Brazilian. He works cheap. Oh, what is yeah. the Brazilian okay. guy's name? No idea. Brazilian guy. <laughs> hey, um, Bryce, what's the Brazilian guy's name? Hang on, I got his uh, John Guest PC audio, no video tech. There, you. Bryce, yeah, you there? Yeah. What's the? Do you know the Brazilian guy's name? Felipe. No way. No. Does he speak? Yeah. Of the, does he speak of the English? Um, it's it's there. It's yeah. like Terrence. Okay. Yeah. okay. You can kind of understand him. <laughs> Felipe. All right, Felipe. All right. We can hook Pre-K up if he needs a little help with the Brazilian dude. Because it doesn't sound like old Stone Joe's getting it done. Ooh, Show wee, up. baby. 800 800 radio uh, Who are all these people on hold? You haven't... Remember pre, Caller pre, 5. Pre, 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 you quit screening the call? <laughs> 5. Yeah. Yeah, Look, we have to say Caller 5. It's 420. Yeah, I'm a little bit behind. Uh, <laughs> New, New Orleans, Louisiana. What's up? I'm just taking you live. Hello. Hello. You're on the air. Hello. You're on the air. Yeah. Hey, I got a I got a truck that you might be interested in. What is it? I got a uh, 22 F450 FX4. Um, it's 82,000 miles, man. Um, it's in pretty good shape. Um, looking for payoff and what's, a little boot on top. What's the payoff? Uh, 48. Is it two-wheel drive or four? Four. Dually? Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, of course. Right, hang on. We'll move. It's an F450. What trim level? F450, FF, FX4. It's a, a Lariat. It, it has everything, everything except the sunroof. It's got 80,000 miles? 82. Average, rough, or clean? All clean. If I pay it off and give you 10,000 on top of the payoff, is that good? Uh, seventeen. You want seventeen thousand above payoff? Yes, sir. I don't think I can make that work. What's that add up to? What's your payoff again? Uh, forty-eight. Fifty plus seventeen. No wholesale. Uh, wholesale back to a Ford dealer is like sixty-five. Yeah. Uh, sell it to the Ford dealer. I, I'm hearing all these. Well, all, he, he, here's here's what I know. I'm not trying to be rude. And I, whenever we're going through these market, right, when, when when we're going through these market changes, it's the same thing. I've been doing this for thirty years, so everybody's head is right, up here. Right. The Ford dealer, the this dealer, the that dealer, they all buy their cars from me in the auction. I know what they right, pay, right. right? And I I'm, I know what these guys pay because they buy them from me. And when I run this thing across the auction block, the bidding is going to stop at fifty eight thousand. Right. So it was one hundred and one thousand. No, I know, I know, but it's got eighty on it. I mean. It's just it's great well, truck. Ain't broke in. Yeah, I, I um, I no, no, I offered you fifty eight thousand. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm good there. Maybe maybe sixty, maybe sixty if it's gorgeous. Uh, but the eighty is the problem. The eighty thousand miles and the price point. Somebody has to buy this car with eighty thousand miles, knowing that they're going to put thirty thousand miles a year on it, and it's you know then in two years it's going to have a hundred and forty on it, and then what's it worth? But it's a it's a diesel. I, I hear it's you. A, it's a six point seven. I'm <laughs> the one who has to you sell know, them. They, Dude, when they, I run these 130, 180 thousand mile cars across the block, I mean, I, right. I I sell them every week. I tell my buyers stop overpaying for this stuff. It has changed. It has changed drastically, and it has. So instead of arguing with you, I just rather you go to. And I appreciate you calling. You know, Please don't take me negative because I'm not trying to right. be. Just, oh, just, no, no, I'm not. No, yeah. I understand how it is. Go, mean, go over there and try to get that check from that Ford dealer. And when you show up, they're going to give you a story. And the story is going to change. Right. And then you're going to say John was right. And then they'll be right around my money. And then it'll turn into a real bid. But they tell you lies to get you in. And then they break the news to you right. that something just happened and the manager's not here and he's got to prove this and now he doesn't like it because he just bought one from John in the lane for 58. Why would we give you 65? <laughs> Those are the kind of stories that come up. But anyway, cool. Thanks. Uh, fog hat tickets. We're giving right, away fog hat tickets. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks for calling. We got caller five, I'm sure, already. Right, Pre-K? 
He doesn't know which one's five. <laughs> yeah, that was five. I missed the whole call for fog hat <laughs> tickets thing. So yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, Raphael, you want fog hat tickets, but you're in Houston. Are you really coming all the way up here? Yes, sir. We've uh, we've been there at the uh, Rattlesnake Inn before. We went down there, stayed in Spring Hill, uh, hoping to catch uh, catch you guys one night. But uh, we enjoyed uh, eating dinner there, me and my wife. Yeah. Uh, enjoyed enjoyed the uh, the stay there. Met the uh, the owner. What was her name? Lauren. Laura. Yep. Laura. Yeah. Ma. We hung out there with her, and we had a great time. Then I'm going to give you the tickets. Hey, uh, I don't know if you're awesome. caller five or not. But uh, pre-K, it's hook okay, up Raphael, winner, winner, chicken dinner. and I'll see you Saturday, next Saturday, and uh, go to jcwshow.com if you want to buy some before we sell out for Fog Hat next Saturday. Dear Mr. Fantasy, play me a tune. This is definitely a 420 song. Oh, yeah. This is a, a great This song. is as stony as it gets. Let's just go out with this. We'll be right back. is the John Clay Wolf Show. Check out the Gimme the Vin Garage YouTube channel, complete with live video stream. Be sure to check him out on his website at jcwshow.com.
Stand by. Stand by. Where you at, Gigi? Gigi, I'm going to talk to you. Y'all let me talk to Gigi for a minute, uninterrupted. Now, back to the John Clay Wolf Show. Someone has to tell Miley Cyrus, who this week insisted she was once, quote, chased down by UFOs, but, quote, I'd also bought weed wax from a guy in a van in front of a taco shop, so it could have been the weed wax. Call them toll free. 1-800-800-RADIO. 1-800-800-RADIO. It was the weed wax. What's weed this wax? is the John Clay Wolf Show. Bob, what's weed wax? No idea. Free K knows. It's like hash. Pre-K, you there? Hash oil. He's on the phone. Yo, it's, yo, uh, yo, Pre-K! Yo, what's cracking? Come to us. Tell him to hang on. For sure. I'm he here with y'all. What's going down? Does he have a, does I believe he have there's a, a name, too, for it. Uh, could be the word of the week, too. We wanted to for Rosetta Stone. Could be. Weed um, wax. Do you want to know what it is? Tap on his window, Bob. Oh, you know what it is. Okay. Bob, please tap on his window and give his attention. Pre-K. Does he have a monitor? He does. This guy won't get off the phone. Well, just tell him. Just put it on hold. You put it on hold, and you go to the go. You just put him on hold, and you go to the mic. What's up, y'all? Well, you look frustrated. What's going on over there? Uh, just dealing with the, uh, 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 you know, callers. Yeah, but I mean, when when we call for you on the air, you just need to say, "I gotta go. Gotta put you on hold. Put him on hold." Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. What's going down? Um, weed wax was in that first clip in the rollout, and I didn't know what the hell it was. What the hell's weed wax? Weed wax, uh, like a like a dab. Dab, there it is. <laughs> what is a dab? Man, look, let's just say you know, people are tired of the same old flowers nowadays, and people are finding creative ways to get high. Man, weed wax is basically like the concentrated THC. Oh. So you take a hit of that stuff, and it goes straight to your dome piece, like Jerome's niece. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Speaking of Stony JD, you yes. and I haven't talked about this, but Dubai was over there seeding storms. Yeah, like to get more rain. Oh, were they really? They've been doing it for like ten years, but it finally caught up to them, and they just flooded the hell out of them. Oh, they got it. <laughs> oh, did you not see it? Or you just... Yeah, I saw the the video. They've been they've been seeding clouds since the '60s for rain. How do you seed clouds? You put uh, sodium. I can't think of the the chemical. Wait, 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 wait. Hold well, on. Well, first what? you ask them after dinner. No, oh, here we go. They're making rain clouds? They've done this since the 60s, yes. Yes. You, when you see the cloud with sodium something or other, it causes the uh, the cloud to form and rain. And say, if you overdo it, Dubai. Dubai? <laughs> Dubai. You get uh, storms. So you but, can make it rain? That, yeah, NASA's been doing I this. I thought that was Chip time. Wagner in a strip club no, used to make it make rain. make it rain. <laughs> no, this is very, it's been happening a very long time. Then people say, oh, they're, what is it, chemtrails? It's not chemtrails. It's chemtrailers. It's chem, I mean, they are seeding the clouds, yes, but there's nothing chemically that they're hurting people with or making people. Does it work? Or, I mean, obviously yes, they yes, wouldn't yes, be doing it. It does work, yes. NASA's been doing it forever, yes. Right. Then why don't they do it over African countries that are in a drought forever? Because we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks. Mr. Deeds, Mr. Beats does. Mr. Beats. Mr. Beast. Mr. Oh, Mr. Beast. Beast. Yeah, Mr. Beast. Yeah, yes. he went over there and did a bunch of well drilling mm-hmm. in Africa. Yeah. That guy makes a lot of money. I saw he he's gives got, it back. Mr. Beast. He's got candy bars at Walmart now. He does not. No, yeah. he hey, does. Gigi, Blue speak- package, Mr. Beast. Who is yes. oh my God. Hey, Gigi, speaking of uh, the stores, have you heard about Costco and the return policy? No. What happens with it? I love Costco. I- Correct me if I were. Somebody call in and clarify this because I don't believe it to be true. You can take anything back for any reason at any time on any what? day. Like if you've got an old couch you don't want it anymore, you can take it back and return it. And I'm there's got to be some ago. expiration, but people told me like they'll bring back bones of chicken after they eat the chicken. <laughs> no. <laughs> and turn it back. I didn't in. Like it. And turn it back in. Ooh. I mean, there's, there's just I mean, like an absolute like when you made me think of it when you said hey, candy bars. Someone told me like you can eat a candy bar and bring the wrapper back and just say I didn't like it. And I've and seen the, that at Walmart. And the employees are trained to not ask questions. Something that ridiculous. Here's a bucket of chicken with the bones left. I want my money back. And oh, they wow. get they give them their money back with a smile. I'll tell you this story. <laughs> Must be true. Try to imagine if if you're the person working the counter when somebody brings that back. Yeah. 
what are you going to do? Because I know what I'm going to do. I think your miles may vary with that because not everybody's going to say, no, give me those bones. Here's your money back. Not everybody's going to do that. Right. I wouldn't do that. How come? Because I don't care if Walmart fires my ass. <laughs> those are your bones point. now, sir. I, I, I you ate them. Right. Somebody call in and tell us if that's true. It's 800-800-7234. 800-800-RADIO. So you're saying that you can have a computer. I'm not saying. I'm okay. saying I heard. Okay, you I heard. Heard through the, the, the T is that you can play okay. on your computer for a while. And, oh, you know what? I've used this for a, a year. No. Dan, I okay. heard something Six so months? stupid like you buy a couch and it gets dirty like seven years later and you can bring it back. Take it back. There's like, just no way. No Electronics way. have to be if returned. If that's true, we need to broadcast this heavily and just really <laughs> oh, screw yes. it. <laughs> Electronics, 90 days. I'm reading it. 90 days. Uh, 90 what about days. chicken bones, dog? It does not say anything <laughs> about chicken bones. It does say you don't need a receipt. They'll look up your, but you had to have bought it at Costco because they'll look up what your else? purchase. What else? Does it have anything else besides uh, electronics? It doesn't have a list of anything strange. Um, That's good, though, for 90 days. 90 so if, days? Yeah. yeah, you can have a Only Super Bowl party. Yeah. And get, get a big screen? Get a big screen and all it that, rent it out. Yeah, yeah, there mm-hmm. you go. I'm sure that happens, too. Yeah. yeah. Get some no Costco doubt. dogs. <laughs> what, what was Take that thing Joe down. Exotic's going to sell? You don't want to name Oh, sloppy cocks. Yeah. Oh, maybe I we do that. want to say it again. Sloppy cocks. Mattresses, electronics. Mattresses? That's how long's the how long's the warranty on mattresses? Diamonds. Uh, it says three years. Well, wait, a diamond. Okay, so, so wait, wait, wait. Hold on. What? Stop. Yeah, I'm just, so you're reading their website at this Costco. This is on Costco. Actually, this is a spinoff website called cheapism.com. Okay. Oh. Uh, so this is not fact either. No, it's not from Costco. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Ricky in Texas. Ricky, you're a manager for Sam's Club, not Costco. That's right. I'm a general manager. Okay, so so tell me what what's going on with this. Uh, it's got to be wrong. Uh, no, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, as long as they return, um, you know, most of the product, regardless of the reason, we'll go ahead and refund it. So if I come in there and buy a bag of chicken, and I eat, I I buy ten bags of chicken for a big barbecue. And I use all of it, uh, but I leave one piece of chicken in each bag and bring it all back to just give me my money back. Yeah, I've taken less. And what do you give them? A, do you give them an evil eye when they do it, or do you? Or, or you, are you smiling and move on? Yeah, we smile and move on. I mean, it's part of our policy, you know. Um, they we can afford to take a bite on it. Plus, you know, it kind of gets factors in on your membership, so. Take a bite on it. No pun, Ricky. Don't. You're funny. Adam in San Diego. Good morning. <laughs> Morning. Tell me about yeah, it. You you work at, you work at Costco? No, my wife does. Okay. She works in the bakery. And uh and she's told me some, some crazy things about, about people returning like the most absurd things like mattresses they've been pissed on and blood stains <laughs> on. Um she told me about people that return stems on dead flowers, it just stems. <laughs> Stems <laughs> of what? Flowers. flowers. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Swear to Buddha. And they just, they just uh, but so you can just screw Costco. Is, is, yeah, the craziest thing is the day after Christmas, people actually try to return the damn Christmas trees or the damn Christmas trees. Oh, that's a great idea. Try or do? No, uh, do actually. They, I, I think she said they they, get, they got a return for the for the Christmas trees. Okay, everybody, let's ne- next year. Yeah, we need to remember this at Christmas time <laughs> and really push it and have a big movement. To push back on Costco I don't know, I don't Christmas. They, I don't know how they, they're, they're, it reminds me of that uh, WKRP bit when they were taking all the trash to the city hall. Oh yeah, pranks like that used to used to be a lot more common than today. This yeah. uh, this happened in Cincinnati in the mid seventies. Okay, um, one morning host, a DJ, commented on a current news story reported in Cincinnati about the city not. Picking up trash. Okay, here's the here's the original report that went out. It's cut number three. Here in Cincinnati, the garbage strike moves into its fifth consecutive week. Stay tuned for details on this and all the news at nine straight up. You know, this uh, garbage strike business has started to rot my brain. Uh, <laughs> maybe if uh, City Hall won't come take your garbage, you should take your garbage down to City Hall. <laughs> Leave it on your front steps as sort of a love offering. Uh, so he's just quipping. He's just he just you know having fun with the audience with a real issue that was happening there in Cincinnati, right? 
This is the moment a few hours later when the owner and program director were alerted during a station meeting that the mayor's office had called with an issue, cut number four. For the last hour and a half, approximately a hundred people have dumped their garbage on the steps of City Hall. Why? Because Johnny Fever told me to. When? This morning. Who told you this? The mayor's office. <laughs> That's good. Look, are we in trouble, Jennifer? Absolutely. Do I need to call my mother's attorney? Definitely. <laughs> Better go talk to Johnny. Immediately. <laughs> So they're headed to the control room where the program director is chewing out the morning host who caused the whole problem in the first place. While they're doing that, the uh, news reporter jumps in and and, uh, breaks the news with a special report. Did you tell people to dump their garbage on the city hall steps? Uh, Maybe. They're doing it. (laughs) God, I just mentioned it casually, you know. Coming through. Let him by, let him by, let him by. Excuse me, excuse me. It's like a joke. Now, the main thing is we've got to keep as low a profile as possible on this. Don't say anything, and certainly don't say a word about it. This is Les with a special news flash. That's right. Garbage Holocaust brings city to its knees. This morning at City Hall, without warning, people were tossing every form of garbage. Coffee grounds, eggshells, banana peels, milk cartons, and a list far too disgusting to describe here. (laughs) On to City Hall steps. Who's responsible for these garbage goons? (laughs) What kind of plot? (laughs) The twisted logic behind this garbage conspiracy to deface the Queen City remains a mystery. But one thing is clear. This dark Wednesday will live... In infamy. <laughs> Since Cinco de Mayo's coming up. That's quicker than Christmas. Why don't we load this up for Cinco de Mayo and everybody go get all their Cinco de Mayo gear at Costco and then bring it all Take back. Take it all back. Just Take a little bit. Just back. a little bit. Take that pinata back. Can you back. bring it like an empty... Do they sell booze at Costco? No, you know what? The pinata, though, if they do that... An empty piñata. Return it to awesome. Costco. That's a great idea. Do they sell piñatas at Costco? I don't know. We need to find sure. out. We'll work on this They do next a Walmart. Week. Mm. But this is Costco. Yeah, we're, we're doing Costco here. Okay. We're doing Costco. I mean, they want it, right? Yeah. They're doing it. They're the ones that do this, so they want us to help them. That's right. We're going to help to sell pinatas and then return them empty. That's what we're going to do here. Oh, my God. Jumping. They're turkeys. <laughs> it broke. Yeah. 800-800-7234. 800-800-RADIO. If we lose you on this time zone switch, go to jcwshow.com, and you can watch the next hours on the live stream. Be right back. No, no. Hey, it's Gigi from the John Clay Wolf Show. Do you want the most money for your used car? Do you want a hassle-free process? Of course you do. Give me the VIN, we'll beat your written CarMax offer, or write you a check for 100 bucks. It's that simple. Give me the VIN is A-plus rated by the BBB and thousands of online reviews. Get an instant cash offer and the most money for your used car right now at GiveMeTheVIN.com. America's best car buyer. Sell us your car.
Sam, stay tight. Uh, we're going to get to you here a second. Make sure you're off, r- the radio's turned off, and you're off Bluetooth. Sam, coming up first. You've been telling lies so long, some believe they're true. So they close their eyes to things you have no right to do. Just as soon as you are gone, hope will start to climb. Please don't stay around too long, you're wasting precious time. Make sure you're off Bluetooth, radio's down. Sam, you're up first. Thirty seconds. He called his son a few days after he moved out of the house to see how he was doing. His boy told him, well, Dad, I've got a leak in my sink. His reply, go ahead, son. It's your house. I do it all the time. His brother-in-laws are a couple of real academics. One's a genealogist and the other's a gynecologist. You get the idea. While one of these geniuses is looking into family trees, the other is looking up the family bush. Recently, when his wife noticed their granddaughter playing with her Barbie and a G.I. Joe, she remarked, I thought Barbie came with Ken. The girl responded immediately, No, Barbie comes with Joe. She's only faking it with Ken. Note to self, careful what we say around Meemaw's little princess. He is the world's biggest son of a bitch. Hey man, I don't always drink beer, but when I do, make mine a natty like tall boy. Yeah, buddy. From the Wolf 
Radio Studios. It's time for the John Clay Wolf Show. Presented by GiveMeTheVin.com. Call John. Toll free. 1-800-800-RADIO. And check out the podcast at JCWShow.com. Give me the vid. Do you have the full version of that, or is it just a short this song? Oh, no, it's the full one. Five let minutes. It, let it roll. I okay. love this song. It puts me in the right vibe, man. <laughs> Emotional rescue. <laughs> I'm your knight in shining armor. Here for your emotional rescue. Sam in Northbridge, California. You used to work at Costco? Yes, I did. And what we were talking about earlier, boys and girls that missed it, we're talking about Costco's return policy, and it's pretty weird. Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. Well, they'll take just about anything back. They have changed the policy on electronics because um, people used to come in before a Super Bowl and buy a big screen and watch the game and bring it back. Awesome. So, yeah, they stopped the policy on the But here on the notes it says people would return chicken carcasses. That interests me. And they get a brand new chicken. I've seen them, I have seen them do that. They, they got those chickens for four ninety nine. They'll take that chicken home and bring back the carcass in a clamshell that it came in and Say the chicken was no good. <laughs> <laughs> now, how many times can you do that before you guys say, "Hey, man, you're abusing the system"? Uh, they, you know what? They do flag people, but rarely do they they call them out on the carpet and say, "Hey, you got to stop doing this." Hang on, <laughs> Bryce in Rio Grande Valley, Texas. You got flagged? Hey, yes, JCW. How are you? I'm good. Good. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, I love your show. Thanks, dude. So, hey, I got I got an advertising business, right? Yeah. It's a closed-circuit TV advertising business, and I put TVs in small businesses and run ads for local businesses. I've been doing it for 24 years. Mm-hmm. I actually live in the Hill Country. I'm just down in South Padre Listen to your show on my iPhone because I love it. Good. But, uh, Costco, Costco. So back in the day, like I said, I've been in business 24 years. I joined Costco because of the return policy. And I was using DVD players to run these ads on. Mm -hmm. We're talking hundreds of locations. And DVD players have all these moving parts, and they wouldn't last in a commercial setting. But uh, I'd buy them 69 bucks a year and a half later. I'd take in a pallet of, you know, 100 DVD players and get my money back, buy some more. And this went on for several years until they finally flagged me and wouldn't allow me to do it. And I was in San Antonio trying to return them. So the old guy that works for me, old Vietnam vet guy, he went with me we went up to austin and uh we're in there and the manager got all upset and he was starting to get really angry and then he turned and looked at the old guy had a old style uh video camera recording the whole thing <laughs> so he said give me a second and he walked off and he came back and said we're gonna let you return these but you can't buy dvd players anymore were y'all moving anyway. around with the with, with the racket? Were you changing stores so they didn't recognize your face, or did it matter? <laughs> well, I did hit three stores until I was able to get that last uh, bunch back. But I was told when I joined Costco that they had deals with the the uh, manufacturers, distributors, the manufacturers. Excuse me, that they will take it back. So it really wasn't non Costco. So well, hey, they're making a product that doesn't last very long. So whatever, I'll get another one. There you go. Thank you, sir. That makes sense, then, if they're putting it back on them. Man, I want to do the chicken thing. (laughs) You want to do it bad. Yeah. That just sounds so ridiculous to go back in there. It'd be like a turkey after Thanksgiving and go back in there and just give them a turkey bone. I didn't care for this chicken. It just wasn't quite right. Yeah. I know in the case of Walmart. Gigi, you'd pull that, wouldn't you? I would. I would try. (laughs) I worked at Walmart. I'm serious. I would try. As a teenager. And the lady who did claims, that's called the claims department. Right. And she was just awash in garbage that people brought back. Rick, you used to work in the claims department at uh, Costco? Yeah, the refunds department. So what's the deal? So so I had a guy that came in, and he came from California, bought a house here in Texas, and then decided he didn't like it, moved back to California. He bought like $50,000 in furniture from Costco. But when he moved back, he decided to leave it all to stage the house until he sold it, mm-hmm. he sat on the market for a year and a half, finally sold it, then brought all his furniture back from back to Costco to refund it. They'll do it? Yeah, they did it. And it, it, it got flown up the ladder to corporate, but then the corporate put it back on the store manager's that it's your store, 
He said, well, I'm taking care of the customer, taking care of the member. Wow. And it, not only that, but it took, it took eight hours for assistant AGM, you know, second second rung on the ladder Check this on the loading dock to uh, sit in inventory at all to get it to get uh, the refund done. Did you ever see people bring chickens or turkeys back? <laughs> oh, so here's here's a great one. I had a lady that would come in once a month when her EBT card would get filled up by lobsters, steaks, tomahawk steaks. I mean, top end everything, right? Take it home, barbecue. Next day, bring it, bring half of everything back and say she didn't like it. And what'd you do? I gave her her money back. Let's go. There you go. Uh-huh. I mean, this just turned in. I mean, it's, it's like we're hurting Costco by letting everybody know this, but we're also helping Costco by letting everybody know this. They obviously have a hustle here. Hey. They wouldn't do it, right? Well, their their philosophy is: if we take it back, they're going to come in and spend more money. But you know, their markups ten percent on average on everything they sell. So, you know, here's what here's what I say: you return a thousand dollar TV, and that's. It means you have to spend a hundred thousand dollars to make up that that ten thousand, right? Or right. that th- or yeah, ten thousand to make up that thousand, right? So, yeah, I had a lady that come in by, uh, buy whatever she could and pine nuts because pine nuts got really expensive, and then she returned it back on her from her EBT card for cash. That's awesome. So, yeah. Oh, there's oh. I mean, there's all kinds of stories I have. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Where are you calling from? Hey, not from uh, Houston. Houston. H-Town. H-Town. Thank you, Rick. 800-800-7234-800. We lost Gigi. She's on her way to Costco. I'm right here. Oh, I'm right here. Oh, Shut I, up. I I'm you... right here. <laughs> oh. She's on the way Gathering to up my chicken bones. and What did he call that thing? He called it a clamshell, so he probably really does work at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, putting my chicken bones in the clamshell. I need that six dollars and twenty one cents returned to me. Just have a big barbecue. Hmm. Yeah, I know, right? You but their their chickens are cheap and they're good. So like six dollars and twenty one cents. That's how much a Costco rotisserie chicken cost. Then just put some barbecue sauce on it, put it in the oven and pretend like you did it yourself. What'd you say about black people and white people? Y'all y'all cook and we grill or something? Oh yeah, see you guys. You guys grill. I'm gonna put some stuff on the grill, guys. <laughs> gonna season it with some water and some air, right? And we're like, yeah, we about to cue it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we season with a little hypertension and diabetes. That's why we so tough, and we get all the good diseases because our food tastes so good. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's right. Little things to know. Letters to Gigi. Do we have one? We have one. Yeah. Let's hit it real quick. We gotta find Casey. I've only got two minutes. Oh, we got time. We're good. Mail time. Mail time. The mail's here. Come on. Hey, Gigi, how you doing? It's Casey. Hey, this letter comes from Jennifer in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and he writes, "Dear Gigi, I have a coworker who has given me grief earlier this week about being single over and over, bragging he's married, has a healthy baby, and I just reached a breaking point, Gigi." I said, I asked him about his arranged marriage. He seemed to get very defensive. He said it wasn't arranged. He married his uncle's daughter. Okay, so I informed him that his uncle's daughter is his own cousin and that they're related before the marriage. He went into a rage and said, hey, no wonder I'm single. He just got ugly with me, Gigi. I told him that at least I wasn't the one with the habit of breeding with my own family members. He went to our HR department, GG, and I was basically told to cool it because he's from the Middle East. I never thought of anything cultural with him, merely pointing out that facts, GG. GG, did I do something wrong? Jennifer, yeah, here's went. your long distance dedication to that co worker. It's a tune by Brad Paisley from 2018. Here's First Cousins. Yeah, First you don't have to kill a fly with a bazooka. I mean, damn. You know what I mean? She went hard and she went ham. She went all out. But she didn't have to do that. And that probably is how come she is single, just like me. (laughs) So you're mean, Gigi? Are you too hard on men? Yeah, I mean, sometimes. But you don't mean to be. But it's just like, damn, you're stupid. What do you do to men? You know, so, huh? What do you do to men? What's the common denominator that you've heard a complaint about you in a relationship over the years? My mouth. I don't listen. Mm-hmm. I don't listen. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
And sometimes I hurt people's feelings on accident. But it's just if you get me drinking, you get me liquored up and give me a little, you know what I mean? That I'm going to disengage my brain and just start shooting from the hip. And yeah, it's not a good thing. We saw you at the Christmas party. We know. (laughs) Hey, we've got to go to break. Coming back is the car segment, the lightning round. 800-800-7234. 800-800-RADIO. California, you're on. We've got five buy centers for Give Me the Vin in California. Burbank. Riverside, Costa Mesa, Anaheim, Oh no, San Diego. We just got a new office in San Diego. Yeah. Close to San Diego this time. Yeah, in SoCal, we've got five. We've got 32 by offices where you can drop your car off, where you can pick it up all over the country. Forgive me, thevin.com. Call in right now. Give me your make, model, miles, average, rough, or clean, and I'll hang a number on it right here, right in the middle of the radio show. This is the segment where we do cars for just a quick hit, just a couple of minutes. So stay tuned through this song. We'll do the car thing, and then we'll get back to BS. Be right back. If it's new car time, give me the VIN.com reminds you that buying smart always means getting the best offer for your current vehicle. You don't have to haggle for hours with retailers or deal with low balling strangers from Craigslist when it's as easy as logging in, entering your VIN number and a couple of picks, and getting your best offer fast. Because smart sellers make smart shoppers. So get the market's best bid and your check on the spot with give me the VIN.com, America's best car buyer. Sell us your car. Give me the VIN.com. So easy you can do it in your things give me the vin check out jcwshow.com
Callers, hang tight. Make sure you're off Bluetooth and radio's down. Off Bluetooth and radio's down. One minute. A 78 Continental. How you doing? Good. A 78 Continental Mark V is not worth 20 grand. Oh, it says 9 okay. grand. Okay, it says 9 grand. I thought it said 19 is what you want for it. Huh. Is it oh, one? Well, yeah. Uh, well, I looked on looked online, average price I've seen for those is about 18, 19. But of course, I know you guys got to make money too. It's a 78 Continental? Yes, garage cap. 460 blue leather, uh, original one owner. My grandpa owned it, just passed away about three weeks ago. Uh, handed down the family trust to my dad, along with a 64 Ford Galaxy, a 75 Thunderbird, and a uh, 1930 Model A, I believe. Do you want to sell all of them? Yes, he does. Okay. Go to GMTV-C. And what that is, that's okay. our classic and collectible website. And I've got specialists okay. on that one. Uh, Gary Bennett and Muffy Bennett. They're out in Phoenix. And Gary uh-huh. ran Barrett Jackson for 20 years. He knows this stuff great. Okay. I've got a 600. What was the? I've got a 600 mile uh, 72 Mark IV or five in the garage. Oh, here. wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, I gave, wow. 15, well, I, gave, I, I, gave I gave I gave 15 for that one. Do what? Oh, the uh, side? 15 for the. That's, that's what I paid. Yeah, that's what I paid for it. But I bought it in a big package of twenty four cars from this lady in Alabama. And, oh, that's awesome! And man. we had to spend we had to spend like literally five grand a car getting these cars because they sat for fifty years. And I had to do brakes, wow. radiators, gas tanks, everything on all of them. But anyway, GMTV, like give me the VIN, GMTV dash okay. C. For classic and collectible, G- GMTV dash right. C, and load these cars up, and um, or do a couple, and just say, hey, Muffy, send me or handle it. The, the, she'll she'll contact you, and she'll get your number on all of it. Where are you? What city? Okay, uh, uh, I'm in Shannon, uh, North Carolina, but the cars are really located in Jackson, Ohio. Okay, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll get on it. Thank you, sir. My name's John Clay Wolf. I buy cars and radio for America's best car buyer. Give me the VIN.com. Be back with more show right after this song. Hey, it's Gigi from the John Clay Wolf Show. Do you want the most money for your used car? Do you want a hassle-free process? Of course you do. Give me the VIN will beat your written CarMax offer or write you a check for 100 bucks. It's that simple. Give me the VIN is A-plus rated by the BBB and thousands of online reviews. Get an instant cash offer and the most money for your used car right now at Give me the VIN.com, America's best car buyer. Sell us your car. Give me the VIN.com. So easy you can do it in your underwear. This is it. I showed him what true artistry looks like. The John Clay Wolf Show. If it's more you crave, check out jcwshow.com. Podcast replays, Twitch, socials, live stream, and check out the GMTV Garage YouTube channel.
Shine. Rules the near shine. With Vera Shine. This one goes out to Gigi. Too because we're playing Jeopardy now. Oh, here we go. What's the name of this song, Dom? Uncle Pin. What is this? All right. We are going to play Jeopardy. What is today's stuff? What are the topics, sir? Today's categories in Wolfpack Jeopardy are first off, Hush your mouth, weird southern phrases. Mm. And category two, spinning off the tube, TV songs that hit the pop charts. Mm. What? Mm. Okay. All right, let's roll. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Whatever. Cry me a river, gal. Here comes question one. Okay. Listen closely. These don't have to be as hard as they sound, okay? <laughs> Strange <laughs> and Gigi, southern we, 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 phrases. We, we, we got to put a little bit of a noose on you today. You got to chill it down just a tick. Strange wow. southern phrases. Listen closely now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Inject the sound a dog makes with an oak or a maple or a spruce. These are all trees. 
while aggressively informing whomever you're talking to that you have no interest in what they're telling you. What's the weird southern phrase for that? I don't give a rat's ass. Sound of a dog. A sound of a dog. What is a sound of a dog? What sound does a dog make? Bark. Ah! Bark. Correct on part one. Bark. What are what? oaks, what? maples, and spruces? What is your high? <laughs> They're trees. <laughs> I mean, what? Kind? Yeah, but I mean, dog bark, tree. bark, okay. wood, bark, dog. Bark. What's that have to do with the southern? Bark. Are you kidding me tree. right now? Are we really going to let this happen? And you're if you're trying to tell somebody to get the right answer, time, time, Move time, on. time, time, Gigi, time, time, time. Okay. Wow. You got a bark yeah. and you got a tree. All right. You're trying to tell someone you have You're no barking interest. at the wrong tree. That's correct, hey. Gigi. There's a point. Wow. That was a... <laughs> How hard was that? that I'll I'll take it. I, I think I'll that take question it. should have been disqualified. It's yeah. mine. Was, it's mine. You don't disqualify the questions because it's my show. Yeah. Question oh, my. two. It is Though mine. it sounds woefully sympathetic, this is probably the most condescending and passive-aggressive insult a southerner might bestow ding, 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 ding. What is bless your little heart? That is correct, Gigi. Oh, no, she got it. Ding, ding. <laughs> two. It's my mind. That's two. Mm-hmm. Question three. Imagine a member of the smallest family of mammals in a place of worship and relate it to a person with not a penny to spend. I don't give a rat's ass. That's incorrect. <laughs> smallest mammals. I mean, rats are mammals, I feel. Mice are mammals. Yeah. Southern a, phrase. Without Southern a penny phrase. to spend. Three blind mice. That man is poor as a church, church mouse. mouse. Yeah, no dude, one got dude, it. Dude, you must have really done this like in the he bathroom does, he, this morning. You must does, be really he. sucking at this game so far. <laughs> These questions. Okay. Down to category two. So this hit that. song from 1980 was borrowed and re-recorded as the theme song for Tom Hanks' first starring role in a television series. One more time. Damn. This hit song from 1980 was borrowed and re-recorded as the theme song for Tom Hanks' first starring role in a television series. Ding, 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 ding. GG. What is bosom buddies and thank you for being a friend? No, that's not. I, I think you mm. nailed it. What is? That's the show, but, but what's the song? it is buddies, but that's not the song. It is bosom buddies. Thank you. For, I was. Uh, that sounded right to me. Uh, I, I'm not going to get yeah, Ding, ding, ding. Yes. JD? What is Billy Joel? My life. That's correct. Hey, yeah, there we go. That's it. I don't care JD what you say board. anymore. This is my life. Yeah, that was good. JD's show. on the board. Question two, two. This song became a chart hit after appearing as the theme to American broadcast of the British spy series Danger Man. Jeez. Ding, 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 ding. What is Secret Agent Man? That is correct. Wow. Wow. What's I did not. Up, okay. Girl? That's good. I'm in touch with all my sides today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's three for Gigi, one That's for JD. That's three, baby. John, you're getting shut out. No, I'm getting Happy shut out. Happy 420. It ta- it's time for double jeopardy, though. No, it's not. It's time to let me win. Well, it is question three of category two. This number one hit by John Sebastian of The Love and Spoonful was the theme song to a TV series about a teacher and his remedial class of high school students known as the Sweat Hogs. Ding, 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 ding. What is Welcome Back, Cotter? Oh, but that's Welcome not the Back. Song. What is the song? What, the song is Welcome Back. That's correct. Your dreams were your ticket out. Welcome back. That's correct. Oh, she's, the same something that we the something gas, nothing. Oh and the something and something that we who to something something. Oh, oh, you know oh, the song. Oh, oh. Yeah, Mr. that's Cotter. right. That's right. <laughs> All right. We'll All right. Yeah. Down, to, down to bonus questions and double jeopardy. I thought I won. I, I, I cannot, no, we're going I to mean, bonus. So we've got two more questions. If I win these two, then I equal, then I match you. There's no, no way. I'm not on it no. today. She's and his, his questions are so out there for me. You're just not, you and I are not connecting well, today. I, as I've said many times, John, this is Jeopardy, not Tic Tac Doe. Question one of Double Jeopardy goes, when you're so anxious that you perspire like a lady of ill repute in a place of worship, you're in this ding, ding, condition. Oh, ding, 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 ding. I, got, I said it yeah, first. John did. Go Thank ahead. you. Nervous as a whore in church. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. Okay. What was the actual answer? She's so nervous, she's sweating like a whore in church. Okay. All right, that's close enough. Man. Close enough. All, All right. right, now you're only down by two, John. Whatever. Jackie's got four. Back to TV themes. This iconic 60s theme song was perfect for a show featuring countless odd villains, one commissioner, and two, or sometimes three, caped crusaders. Ding, 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 ding. ding, ding. What I is Batman? Batman? I said it first. No, he didn't. You... No, you didn't. Okay, we'll, we'll yeah, let someone else say. It. She's got a mic channel there, Turley. If you want, just Let's turn her off. <laughs> turn her off. Wow. John, we repeat the question. No, I, I can't ding and then repeat. What is Batman? That's correct. 
But I said it. No, 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 no. But you said ding, ding, too late. It's all good. It's 420. It's all good. So now we're tied. Tied, yes. Is that right? No, I love you most, Polios. So is it down to this? Yep. This is it. All right. Last question. This TV theme with a surf music motif was perfect for a police drama set in the Aloha State. John? What is a Hawaii Five-0? That's correct. And we have a winner. Look at John coming from behind. I demand a recount. Come back, kid. Okay, you lose I demand twice. a recount. Hey, did Trump really poop <laughs> himself? You stole in, this in, game in, of Jeopardy. Did Trump really poop himself? In, um, dude, did, did you court? see this? People were reporting this yesterday, <laughs> and the guy I saw was shared by uh, another journalist that I, I like and trust. But we never got confirmation on it. They said that in court, Maggie Hamerman had reported that Trump not only fell asleep, but while he was asleep, Farted in court repeatedly. That, that happened. No way. And that the smell was terrible. Now, no now the smell didn't have to be terrible. That's right. too bad. Now, people mentioned Maggie Haberman's name, but she never reported that. Nobody else shared any kind of a credible source on it. So according to Snopes.com, it is not confirmed. Gotcha. So it's just a did photo. Did he fart or no. did he not fart? That's really what we're talking God. about. There's a photo wow. going around, and it looks like he's, you know, <laughs> he's got that look in his face like he's pushing one out. The smell was and, the greatest, the yeah. greatest ever. Uh, and that's that's where this whole rumor came about, because he's not really enjoying his time in court. Which, no. You know, who would? Hey, Gigi. Hmm. Did you notice that I just won? <laughs> Whatever. You know what I mean? I, you stole that game. Whatever. How? How did because they let it? you get they I was ahead. I was ahead. Yeah. And then I got the point mm. for the daily double. Then like, no, no, let's just give him some more times to win again. So no, you didn't. No, we were but racing okay. and I was just letting you no, go, you letting no, you, you go, weren't. letting you go, and here comes the finish no, line. Whoop! Pass. No, you weren't. Okay. Gigi, you did real good. You wanted to be the hare and the tortoise. You had some answers that I I didn't expect you to get. You had some questions that were really yeah. Weird. He, he, this was you know what I tapped into really my difficult. white people side. Really That's difficult. That's what it is. There are no weird I had to questions. Switch up. I That's had to what a loser says on. when they don't know the answer to the question. That question was weird. <laughs> no, this no, courtroom you know mopped us all up. Was Adam Carolla? That the courtroom's morning. very very yeah. cold. We're all freezing in there. It's a sham trial. That's what a loser says. That's how you lose. Oh. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, Piss everybody off. Let me just slide right into that. Just, just he made take, me do it, JD. Take our entire audience and just pee all over all of us. <laughs> These yeah. questions are weird. I demand a recount. Oh, I am yes. the winner in my mind. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, in my mind. But I think you need to sit in the so outbox. You have that. Questions well, are weird, Wally. We'll be right back. My name is John Clay Wolf, Black Cars Radio for America's <laughs> Best Car Buyer. Give me the VIN.com. And if Give Me the VIN does not beat a written CarMax offer, we will gladly send you a check for a hundred dollars, given the opportunity. But it must be a written offer, not the online offer, because when you get there, they change the numbers often. We need the written offer after the inspection. Bear back. This is the John Clay Wolf Show. Check out the GMTV Garage YouTube channel, complete with live video stream, at jcwshow.com. Go pre K. Okay. And before any of this starts, uh, 
give me your name and what you do. My name is Keith Granith. And right now I'm general contractor on this job here. And uh, I've been a framing contractor for about 40 years now. So what kind of shape was this building in when you got here? Pretty bad shape. <laughs> Anything else? Nah, just pretty bad shape. When was it built? Hell, before 1920, that's her real date. Maybe late 1800s. With an old Ford house. And then after the Ford place, it was a... Uh, what was it? One of those. Masonic Lodge? Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that name. <laughs> yeah, that's been vacant probably the last 10 years. So what are we, uh, what are you doing on it now? Right now we're trimming out all the beams we put in. Uh, hanging the drywall and we put a structural steel, uh, steel beam right across there. Let's go take a look. Yeah, you bet. Right here was the old beam. We just covered it up. Right here we put a steel eye beam across here to hold that second floor. Trimming it out now. We're at the final touches of this place. Trim it out, hanging drywall and all that stuff. So then, uh, what's this bottom area going to be once it's all finished? He's going to have all the show cars in here. Offices right here. This was a carport and we turned it into office. Hanging drywall in here right now. We're keeping the ceiling. Just gonna paint it. Was this part of the original plan? Huh? Was this part of the original plan? Not at first it was. They added this. <laughs> but it's a good idea. Now he's got more room for his cars inside. The office is working to be right here. Underneath this I beam. Put cars and we decided to make those the offices right there. We've got offices over there in the bathroom. Got an old safe right here. How old, how old do you think that safe is? Yeah, probably. Since the building's been put in. I can't open it. <laughs> Let's take a look upstairs. All right. On in the wolf pack. Bobo, we appreciate you. Thanks, man. Gigi doesn't. She said, <laughs> no, you care. left me hanging, but whatever. I still love you. And I was there first. You're talking about the show meeting we had yesterday. <laughs> She's the only one that showed up. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sitting there like, yeah, guys, I'm three minutes early. Right. Like, what the heck? That was 50 to 1 odds in Vegas. <laughs> the John Clay Wolf Show, every Saturday morning. Now, back to the John Clay Wolf Show. Seven two three four eight hundred eight hundred radio. Paul in California. Good morning, you're on the air. How you doing? Hey, hey, you're uh, what city in Cal are you in? Uh, I mean Afton. Oh, he's breaking up terrible. It's in like up by Ann Old Valley. Okay, you're breaking up real bad. And um, so okay, I'm gonna have to. How about now? I, I'm, no, it's really cutting out. How about now? Here's what I see. I see a ninety. I, I'm looking at the notes. It says ninety model Corvette, fifty six thousand. K original miles, owned by former mayor Tom Bradley of L.A., maintain well, bigger engine, wants five thousand. Am I reading that correct? That's about right. Okay. Well, let's just just. Um, Am I breaking up now? You're breaking up terrible. It's digitizing. So I'm gonna have to dump you off. I'm gonna have somebody call you. But go get the title, and um, and I'll get it picked up and get you paid. No, no, the title. My sister was, thought she was going to get the car. She lives in Arizona. She took the time. I mean, I, here, she took it and had it transferred into Arizona. But the car has always been here. But we got the title and stuff. But then her um, husband let his head. Wouldn't let her have the car. Okay, so where's the, the car now? Free. Oh, it's right here, sitting about 
75, well, about 100 feet from our front door. So where's the title? The paperwork's here. The paperwork's here. The title's here. Okay. It got transferred into Arizona. Then everybody, hang on, hang on. Everybody calm down. So now I'm going to bring you a check for 5000 and I'm going to take the title and the keys. And I'm going to leave, and I'm not going to mess with Lettuce Head, man. I'm just dealing with you. <laughs> right on, right. Lettuce Head's my brother-in-law. All right. Well, let's just you and me. I can't, I can't deal with all these third parties, man. It's just, I can just you and me, right Paul. On, right it's just on, you no and problem. me. All right. You all right. We'll, we'll get a hold of you. You'll put a big smile on Mom's face. All right. Sold to GiveMeTheVin.com. Thank you. Let us head. <laughs> God Almighty! I have a very high probability that something's going to go wrong in this transaction. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. No <laughs> way. I, not on our end. You get that idea. I'm good. I'm solid. I like the miles, but something weird's going to happen. Let, Let us head. head's going to get involved. <laughs> He's in the middle of this deal. <laughs> Just saw something on Facebook. You know, you read something really quick and you go, oh my God, I can't believe I fell for that. A new drug has been developed for lesbians with depression. It's called Trichoxigan. <laughs> <laughs> Gigi got it. Man, this sounds... You know, I say a lot of weird stuff. And... and it comes from my dad. It's just my old man, dude. He just, I heard too much at, at a young age. Like, here's a, here's an example. So my dad, before they were converting trucks, this guy, guy named Wayne Bell and he were good friends. And Wayne started, he developed the Western Hauler for you cowboy oh, guys yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's Great Wayne. truck. And dad was kind of not competing with him, but, but he was fluffing his trucks too. And they had these Chevy Dooley, he had air horns on it. It was all. Remember those. They were really ghetto if you look back and think about it. But anyway. Um, cowboy ghetto. Cowboy ghetto. Yeah, absolutely. This is like 70. How old is I? 78. That's about right. It's maybe 80. So he, he, here's an example of with my father. We're sitting at a red light. There's a lady. I'm eight years old. There's a lady coming across the street. And he's like, or wait, waiting to cross the street. And we're in that truck with air horns. And he says, you like milkshakes? Yeah, dad, I love milkshake. <laughs> Can, Can we go get a milkshake? He's like, hang on just a second. You see that guy right there? You know, large-breasted. I get it. And she starts walking across <laughs> in front of us. <laughs> and he hits those air horns, and she starts hopping up and down, and he said, there's your milkshake. That's great. I mean, <laughs> I see where you get it, man. Oh, I mean, it's just terrible. And, and then we were, you know, we lived out in the country on a ranch, and there's this little cute little house with these two three-quarter ton trucks parked side by side under a little awning and everything's on. But, and they had two horse trailers. And I was like, wonder, Dad, why they have that little house and those nice trucks, and they have two of them. Oh, those are lesbian school teachers. <laughs> <laughs> what? Exactly. I mean, he didn't know if they're lesbian school teachers. No, but he just came up with he it. He just comes up with it. But he's doing the Jerry Lang Wayne Longmire thing. <laughs> right. 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 He typed them. You know, like they're horse gals and they're, you know, you just stereotype all this stuff out. And I still drive by that house today and I think about lesbian school teachers. And it's been 45 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Tracy, you have a bad dad joke? Well, yeah. Go ahead. So, what do you call O.J. Simpson's casket? What? The juice box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I like a lesbian school teacher's oh, better. That's terrible. <laughs> do you hear they're trying to auction off the Bronco? No way. Yeah, O.J.'s uh, white Bronco. Looking to sell it. Guess what they want for it? $1.5 million. It's the 30th anniversary of the big chase and everything. To refresh your memory of what the chase was like, or to inform those of you who didn't see it live in 1994, we have a song here from Bob Rivers, cut number one. The TV said the juice must have gone plumb loco when there's cop cars chasing the wide Ford Bronco. Have you heard the story of the low-speed chase and the SWAT teams waiting at OJ's place? That story is true. It's sad to say I was watching the game when they cut away. He told the L.A. cops he was going to give up, and the media set up their satellite trucks at 18 cameras at City Hall. Then OJ's lawyer began to stall. All of a sudden, in a wink of an eye, that Bronco was spotted on 405 on CNN and the Networks 3, the flashing taillights was all you could see. Now the Rockets and Knicks were in game five when O.J. started that fateful drive. His four-way hazard lights were blinking, and no one knew what the Jews was thinking. Well, the newsmen 
Ryan said he'd lost his sense, said insanity'd be his best defense, but they knew this show was awfully hot, so they jockeyed round for action shots. There was psychoanalysts and personal friends begging the Jews to turn himself in. TV copters high above and cops in the bushes dressed like shrubs. Fans were cheering from the side of the Is road. Is that that One Bob Rivers? Yeah, Bob guy. Rivers. Yeah. So wow. this reminds me, the, the Riviera Country Club sure. in Palisades. Yeah. There's this guy named Kurt that works there, and he's been there for like 40 years. There's a lot of celebrities in this place. I mean, it's heavy duty, right? The Riviera, the Riviera. Mm. Riviera. And I said, Kurt, out of all the years that you've been here, what's the wildest thing you've ever seen? And he didn't take him a minute to answer. Mm. OJ. Really? If you think back, the chase, the the guy in the Bronco came up to the Riviera and picked him up. It started right there. That's right. I forgot about that. Yep. And he said the news was just all over everything, everywhere. Weird, weird, weird. How did the Masters end up? Um, the kid from Texas Tech. Yeah, fifth, what's his fellas? Uh, Scotty Scheffler? Scheffler won. Yes, from yeah, Dallas, he, Texas. Yeah. He killed him, and I, I'm not a huge. If Tiger's not in it, I mean, he was, but he ended up finishing dead last wow. in the tournament. Did he get uh, dead last? Yeah, we've got Tiger Woods' mother here that she's going to explain what happened and how he buckled. At the Masters. Maybe she can explain Boy, she's visited us like three weeks in a row. I just really amazing. like her. I really like her. <laughs> Come here. Hold on. We got to help is. her oh, up in this she... chair. Yeah. She's tiny little Move thing. Move over here. here. Yeah. Uh, up next to the mic. Right, get right up in there. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Make a room for my dress. Room for your dress. Oh. What happened at the Masters with Tyga? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Tyga tries so hard. He tried during her it's like very hard. Golf is not easy no. for Tiger mm-hmm. these days. No. But he make cut and then he fades. <laughs> yes. Fade into background. Uh-huh. You see when you fade into background, yeah. you're not a winner. No. There's <laughs> no way to win, Tiger. No, nothing in the background. I tell him, you must Fly harder. <laughs> Tell him These that. happen when you know practice. Oh, he didn't practice. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes practice. Practice makes makes perfect. Perfect. Oh. oh. <laughs> Why but don't you spend time with your driver? Your your grandson driver probably needs your influence now. Oh. You need to do your mojo on your grandson because he's the new one. He's the good one. He is, as we say, badass. <laughs> badass. You say it too. No, I'm not going to say it. Badass. Badass. Badass golfer. <laughs> he's oh. the chosen one. Thank because you. he spent time with his putter mm-hmm. and his driver. His driver. Oh. oh. <laughs> Thank you, Tiger Woods' mother. <laughs> We're in so much Dutch over there. I know. Hey, right? remember, give me the vin.com. We buy RVs, Harleys. Dirt bikes, jet skis, Boom. buses, Boom. million. We, we bought a million dollar bus before. Um, travel trailers, all all that stuff. Bumper pulls, goosenecks, the works. But no boats. And we also <laughs> buy collectible cars and classic cars. Sixty nine Chevelle SS man. Um, you know, C ten, K ten, Chevy trucks, old Ford trucks, all that stuff. We buy it at GiveMeTheVin.com. Go to GiveMeTheVin to sell your car today and also your RV, your motorhome. But don't forget the classic and collectibles. But I can tell you, if you saw it on TV, bring 50 grand. We're not giving that. No. No. In most cases. Now, if you've got a built car, there's a big difference between, you know, the one that brings 20 and the one that brings 50 or the one that brings 150. It's all about the details, so just don't get confused in your head. You got an old Grand Torino, right? And you saw one bring fifty grand. Well, that car had a Morrison chassis. It had a blah 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 four twenty seven engine. It had a hundred fifty thousand dollar resto done to it. Yours doesn't qualify. I'm not trying to be on your car. I'm just telling you, keep it real, dog. Right. That's all. Reality. All right. Who sings this? Afro man. Well, of course. Afro Man was in... Corolla said he went to Nashville last week, and it was a comedian thing for Kid Rock at the Ryman, and Afro Man was there. 
But maybe there's a different Afro something. A comedian. Um, he's the only... I don't think he's doing stand-up that I know of. I but. don't know, man. I was happy for Freaky, is he doing stand-up? No, nah, but Afro Man be everywhere. Yeah, he is a touring artist. No doubt. All right, thank you. We'll be back in just a second for some markets and others. We won't. Remember, JCW Show gets the podcast that goes up this afternoon. And rest in peace, Aaron Washabal. We miss you. But I was high. Uh, I'm serious, man. I was going to pull right over and stop. But I was high. La, 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 la. Now I'm a paraplegic <laughs> and I know why. Why, man? Yeah. yeah. Cause I got high. Because I got high. Because I got high. The John Clay Wolf Show is heard every week on great stations like Oklahoma City's KOKQ FM, Q94.7, Oklahoma's Classic Rock, and Palm Spring, California's 93.7 KCLB Rocks. Catch the nation's fastest growing podcast and live video stream at jcwshow.com. And we'll be back with more of the John Clay Wolf Show right after this. I was going to make love to you, but then I got high. I'm serious. I was gonna eat your too. Oh, but then I got high. Uh, triple, triple. Now I'm ah, and I know why. Oh, yeah, hey, no, because, because I got high. Keep going. Because I got high. Hey, do that over, man. Because I got high. Come on, man. Don't, no, come, no, on. No, come on. Go, man. go, go. I messed up go. my entire go. life go. because I got high. Go, uh, go, go, go. I lost my kids and yeah. wife. Because I got high. Say what? Say what? Say what? Say what? Now I'm sleeping on the sidewalk, and I know why. Why, man? Yeah, hey, cause I got high. Because I got high. Because I got high. It was the easiest way to sell a car. At GiveMeTheVin.com, it's all digital. We have a 45-second offer online. It's fast, it's easy, and we have the best online reviews on the planet. Sell me your car. Sell us your car. GiveMeTheVin.com.